Fisher Catholic High School, its administration, faculty, staff, and student body extend to each of you a cordial welcome to this football game. The William B. Fisher Catholic High School and the Fairfield Christian Academy are members of the Ohio High School Athletic Association and abide by the rules and regulations as set forth by the association to maintain high standards of conduct, competition, and relations with member schools. The athletes, coaches, and officials are guests of the William B. Fisher Catholic High School. You are requested to so regard them and to so treat them in keeping with the ideals of good sportsmanship. In perception and practice, good sportsmanship shall be defined as those qualities of behavior which are characterized by generosity and genuine concern for others. The officials assigned to this game have been selected and assigned according to procedures adopted by the Ohio High School Athletic Association. The officials are referee Roger Hopewell, umpire Jamal Heibler, linesman Mark Allman, line judge Roy Enyart, back judge Sean Henderson. Their experience and their integrity qualify them for their important part in this friendly interscholastic football game. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, The Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, The Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. Everybody, welcome to the Interphase Video Productions High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Jared Stewart alongside Tim Shoemaker. Tonight we're at Fulton Field for a Mid-State League Cardinal Division battle between the Fisher Catholic Irish and the Fairfield Christian Knights. And Tim, right away, I have to say it's good to be back in the booth with you. And, of course, uh, we'll talk to Mario on down on the field uh, in just a minute. But uh, playing dad duties uh, during the football season, so I don't get to do as many games with you. But uh, it's good to be back with you. Great to have you. So let's talk about uh, this matchup. First of all, these two teams come in uh, both struggling a little bit, but but kind of on different paths, I guess you could could say. Uh, Fairfield Christian, one and four. However, that's deceiving. They're a much better team than a one and four team. Yeah, they've had a couple of close games. Uh, if you look at the schedule, and last week when I talked, to, I asked Coach Barton, I said, okay, what was with that? I mean, yeah. they took Grove City apart last week and said they had a couple of interceptions for touchdowns, uh, returned those, and also had a block punt and just really played explosively he said yeah. he, he kind of felt that's where they needed to be but you know it just takes time to gel and get people back off the injured uh, list and and all that to make it go but uh, you know I kind of was shocked last week when I saw the score initially yeah. 
Meanwhile, for Fisher Catholic, it's a team that's uh, really struggled early. 0-5, uh, have been outscored 291-66. to However, the last two games they put up some points, which has got to be encouraging to Coach Timmis. Yeah, you know, talking with Luke this week, it was great to talk to him and Coach Barton. They're, they're so upbeat in, in a situation where if you looked at one loss, you'd think, oh, my gosh. Yeah. But neither one of them are like that. And, and Coach Timmis especially realizing that he has such a youthful group and they're really having trouble up front, offensively and defensively. And, and when you have trouble at the point of attack, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to create other issues. Let's bring in the third member of our crew. That's Marion Royster down on the field. And, uh, Marion, uh, we touched briefly on the injury bug. Both these teams have felt it uh, all year. Uh, QB Pardon for uh, the quarterback for FCA going to be out. Uh, for the rest of the season. For Fisher Catholic, they get some guys back. Nick Dolce is going to be a big boost for them coming in tonight. Yeah, Jared, first of all, great to have you back for the re for uh, this game this uh, tonight and uh, understand, uh, you know, that you've been watching a lot of Fisher Catholics and you know better than anyone, you know, how important it is to stay healthy. And, yes, not only uh, the players you talked about, but also Jack Wright, yeah. a little banged up coming into tonight's game. Uh, wasn't sure if he was going to play tonight, but uh, – given our, our scoop artist, which is you, uh, <laughs> letting us know that um, he should be able to play some offense tonight. Huge for the Irish tonight. They'll be able to have him in the backfield, one of their best players, definitely hardest runners, uh, gets those tough yards when they need it, and they'll need all hands on deck if they want to try to get a win tonight. Tonight's pregame brought to you by Personal Touch Party Rentals. And Carol and Eric Weddington would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events in Lancaster. They're a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio area since 2003. They would love to help plan your next event. Weddings, special events, even corporate events, all with a personal touch. They can be reached at 740-689-6991. Now, Shu, let's talk personnel for these two teams. Uh, uh, one of the guys that uh, Coach Pardon is, is concerned about with Fisher Catholic is Hyde O'Reilly, the sophomore. He's had a phenomenal season so far, not just with, with his receptions, but the runs after catch have been very impressive by Hyde. Yeah, he had a super big week. Uh, was it last week, I believe, that yeah. uh, just had a great ball game. And, you know, when I had a chance to talk to Coach Pardon, he just brought up that, um, you know, they've really got to be concerned with him catching the football. And, you know, from Luke, uh, Coach Timmis's viewpoint, he just said he's an impact player. Yep. He's going to impact the game, and he said he does it on both sides of the ball. Now, for uh, Fairfield Christian, you know, we, we mentioned they missed, uh, they lost their quarterback, Zy Pardon, for the rest of the season. However, uh, the quarterback that stepped up for them is Welsh. He's come in and really kind of picked up where Pardon left off, hasn't he? He has. And, you know, the thing I think that's helped him, he's got two senior receivers uh, with Sam Rowell as the yeah. leading receiver. And Ben Hopple's the second leading receiver, and that that helps a young quarterback when you have veteran seniors that know what's going on. And I, you know, I I, I think when Coach Pardon brought up, uh, you know, that he tore his knee this summer, it took him still a while to adjust to not having him around. He was around all season last year, and now he feels like they're finally getting in a groove. Yeah. Yeah. The Irish will be kicking off to Fairfield Christian tonight's kickoff is brought to you by Sheridan Funeral Home. Sheridan Funeral Home is proud to be supporting high school football. They've been servicing the communities of Lancaster and Fairfield County for over 100 years. After this kickoff, we'll get to our keys to the game. We're glad to have you along on a beautiful night for high school football. Shu, it, it, the, the saying always goes, uh, Ohio is the place where you can experience uh, all seasons in one week. I think we've, we've done that this week. Haven't well, we? and the beauty is it is officially autumn. Yes, it is. As of 9 o'clock last night. So this is our first full day of autumn, and it feels like it, and it's exciting to yeah. be here. I tell you, so Wednesday, you know, was in the 90s, and then last night I was over to junior high football game at General <laughs> Sherman, and it was chilly. The wind was blowing. How's it feel down on the field, Marion? Feels pretty good, actually. I expected it to be a little cooler at kickoff, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the perfect weather, and I think we should see a good one tonight. Probably get cooler as it goes on, but we're good right now. And we are underway. J.J. Vio with a little squib kick. It is returned up to about the 40 or 34-yard line. And the Irish make the stop there. That's where it's like the 39-yard line is where Fairfield Christian will go on offense. Todd Blair returned the kick for the Knights. Well, you can see the right guard right now if you pay attention for FCA, John Grabens. Yep. He's big, he's strong, and Coach Timmis is very concerned. They're just going to get behind him and try to push him out of the way. Another guy we didn't really mention, uh, we were talking about personnel, is Danny Blair in, out of the backfield. has had a phenomenal season so far. Here is Blair right up the middle, and he's going to pick up about four on the first on first down, brought down at about the 44-yard line. 
Tackle made by Gage Armstrong. Keys to the game tonight are brought to you by North Body Shop, providing quality customer service parts and reliability since 1979. Owner Mark North will provide you with a free written warranty on each estimate. That's Mark North of North Body Shop. He'll treat you right. Well, I think if you look at Fisher Catholic's keys, you know, they've got to somehow try to make FCA one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jared, I, I, you know, as good as they are, and you can see here. Wow. But they've got to still yeah, make it so that here. they can't pass it and they got to run it, or they can't run it and they got to pass it. They've got to eliminate some of the options for the Martin opponent. And on the for the Simon Martin in on that Martin tackle, and that, that's a kind of a scary hit. I tell you what, watch this replay. Danny Blair just lowers the boom on Simon Martin, and Simon is just coming back this week. No, no, check check that. He's been back, but he's he's struggled with some uh, little dizziness in some games earlier this year. Danny Blair, a tough runner for the Knights. Here's a pass out to the right side into the hands of Rusty Hutchinson. Hutchinson still on his feet up near the 40 and going to be gang tackled there, but a gain of about eight on the play, and Marion, they'll take eight yards on first down every time. Yeah, they will. Uh, you, I, you'll see them utilize that perimeter, try to get out on the edge, use their speed. They've got uh, playmakers. We talked about Blair. Uh, a couple other ones, you know, Sam Roush obviously making some plays in, in the passing game. So I would look, still look to see a lot more of that going on as the night goes, getting on the perimeter, quick and in a hurry. Good block right there by Hudson Harper as well. It is. Sophomore. And, and I, I think the other thing Coach Tim has stressed is, you know, th what they've got to get better at is not complicated. Jared. Obviously, you can't make them a year older or a year stronger or any of that stuff, but you can get better at the fundamental parts, and that, that fundamental part on defense is tackling. Here's Welsh uh, handing it off to Todd Blair this time. I think this is going to come back for a hold. Todd Blair, ball carrier. Yep. And that was a good run by the freshman Todd Blair. Gage Armstrong on the tackle for the Irish. Well, it's kind of funny. We talked a couple weeks line. ago. I know Marion and I, and every time I had an opportunity to talk to the head coaches, they all talked about the key word. The key word this year is consistency. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, um, Coach Pardon's no different. He yep. just said, we are not consistent in a lot of areas. He said, we do some awful good things. Yeah. But just like their penalties, they're, they're drive killers. Yeah. They, they really are. That makes it second and 16 after what would have been a first down after that, that run by Todd Blair. Gabe Welsh out of the shotgun, looking to pass down the middle of the field. And a nice job by his receiver. I believe that's Danny Blair. Had to come back for it. Is that four? No, it's number nine. That's Rusty Hutchinson. That's his second reception tonight. Yeah, really good. You see the replay here. Watch the throw. The throw's good, but the reception is even better, Jared. As you said, he came back to yeah. the ball, and as a defender, you got to pick that ball up sooner. Yep. Welsh, this time, swings it out. Hutchinson again, and will be brought down by Nick Dolce. Dolce wearing number 68 tonight. He's typically number six. Dolce's a kid that's a senior. He started playing football last year for the first time ever. Missed the majority of the season but by a freak skateboarding accident. This year, he was uh, boy, he was looking really good in scrimmages. In the final scrimmage of the uh, of the scrimmage season up at Millersport, he broke his hand. This is his first game tonight uh, as a senior, and he's been moved to the offensive line and uh, linebacker. Looks like actually right now he's playing defensive line for the Irish. Second down and eight for the Knights. Blair stands to the right of Welsh. Welsh, pass out to Ben Hopple. And if ball's loose on the field, I think the Irish got it. I think you're right. Nice job by Fisher Catholic. Looks like Simon Martin. We'll see who made the hit. I think it was Hyde O'Reilly, number four, came up, delivered the boom, knocked that ball loose. Actually, it looked like number eight. That's Simon Messerly got a hand in there. We just saw it on the replay. And Gage Armstrong right there to fall on it. That's a big, big break for the Irish as Fairfield Christian was uh, putting together a nice-looking drive. Big play. Big play. Fisher Catholic goes on offense, first and 10 at their own 23-yard line, led by sophomore quarterback Grant Kiefer. Standing to his left will be Jack Wright, who's playing only offense tonight. Suffered a shoulder injury in uh, practice on Wednesday. So we'll see how that holds up for him tonight. High snap. Kiefer does a nice job bringing it down. 
Lops a pass out, and wow, that was dangerous. Well, I thought he had the flat there with Jack. If he'd yeah. given him the ball sooner, um, obviously it's easy to be a quarterback up here. But, but just what I saw yep. on the field, I, I felt like they had the flat. You see the replay again here. Look at that. You get the ball to a good back, and he's got some room. It's almost like a, just a, a short run. Well, any, anybody that's watched Fisher Catholic play, and, and obviously teams watch film, they know that O'Reilly is the favorite target. He gets 90% of the passes thrown to him, and they, he had a lot of guys, a lot of white jerseys around him right there on that one. Sometimes it's a matter of just taking what the defense gives you. Yeah. As, as Shu was saying on that, when he had the back in the flat, just get him the ball, let him run, take a few yards, it's better than nothing. Second and 10. Kiefer again looking to pass. This time he does have O'Reilly at the 28. O'Reilly breaking a tackle and gets out. He fumbled the football, He's but down. I think he was down. The official going to give that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. He was clearly down. I thought so. What do you think, Marion? He was definitely down. The referee didn't see it. It looked like he was looking at the you know the other tacklers coming and it wasn't watching the knee wow. go down. But, yeah, that, that's a miss there. Hopefully we have a replay here. Here is the replay. I, I, I mean, you know, we never usually say anything about you know, officiating calls or any of that, but I, I, I think this is pretty obvious. It's moving. Well, maybe not. I think, well, I think no, he, got, he recovered it. He, he bobbled it, then recovered, and then lost it once he was on the ground again. Here's Blair. Yeah. And a whistle or a flag coming in. Yeah, not to belabor that one, guys, but I think when he recovered it, he was down. I think yes. that's what got yes. missed. You know, when he, when he recovered the ball, he was down with yep. the knee, but – just didn't see it. It's going to be another hold. Another hold on Fairfield Christian. Our officials tonight, referee. Shoot, you want to read those? Is that too small for you there? No, no. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Roger Hopewell. Jamal Hibbler's the umpire. The head lineman, linesman is Mark Allman. The line judge is Roy Enyard. The back judge is Sean Henderson. That's much better reading it off the, that it, screen than, uh, than uh, the little phone screen, right? Guy's yeah, showing your age up there now. <laughs> hey, be careful. <laughs> well, she hands it off to Blair. Blair around the left side and gets up near the original line of scrimmage to the 32. Clock rolls down to 8.01 to play in the first quarter. No score. Yeah. Here Hand, at Fulton Field. Hands it to me. It's got a 6.5 font on it. It's like, okay, good luck. <laughs> I hear you, Shu. I hear you. <laughs> Second and 12 for the Knights. Second down and 12. Oh, the world we're in now. A little different. Yeah. Fairfield Christian goes no huddle. Not necessarily a hurry up. Just they do not go back and huddle. Right. Welsh. Sends his man in motion, low snap, and nice job by Blair to pick it up off the ground. Just a heads-up play by Danny Blair. Going to bring up a third down and nine. You know, Coach Pardon was saying, you see the replay here. When in doubt, pick it up and go. <laughs> you know, he made something out of nothing. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You know, they like to run the four wide spread, and he said, we use some run and shoot concepts along with an option game at some point probably tonight is what we'll see. So we talked about FCA and how their uh, their record is deceiving as Fisher Catholic takes a timeout. But, uh, you know, this is a team that they're, the combined record of their opponents this year is 18 and 7. Um, you know, they're 1 and 4, but if you look at the score, you know, they've only been outscored 131 to 108. Uh, they've lost two ga two of their losses have been by a combined two points. Yeah, well, you look at Greens five and zero, oh, Eastern's four and one coming in this week, Burns four and one. I mean, those are those are good uh, yeah. uh, good football teams for this division. Right. You've seen some of them. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Saw Worthy to Christian last last week. Here's a Fairfield Christian schedule. They're going to get Worthy to Christian next week. Who I saw last week, and they. Uh, they put up uh, quite a few points on Fisher Catholic. Yeah, that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting to see what happens. But, you know, uh, for them, if you look at numbers, and they don't always mean that's why we play the games. Right. And, you know, Coach Pardon mentioned that tonight. He goes, we haven't beaten Fisher since 2016. He said, and this is a big deal to us. Tonight. Yeah, yeah. He says, I don't know if you call it a rivalry or whatever, but it's crosstown bragging Absolutely. rights. Absolutely. School's separated by, what, just a couple of miles? Yes. Third down and nine. Here's Blair right up the middle. Blair has the first down and more up across the 20. 
to about the 17 yard line. Bate, I like I like him. He's he's north south, buddy, and he runs hard. Sophomore halfback, Marion, uh, you got to be impressed with uh, the running of Danny Blair. Been very impressed. Uh, almost like he shot out of the cannon oh, yeah. on several of those runs. Just hits the hole downhill, runs hard, runs through tackles. You can tell he has a lot of speed. You can see how he had a couple real awesome br game breakers last week, 95 yards and 50 yards. He's a real deal. I know his family well, and uh, his dad tells me that uh, he eats, breathes, sleeps football. <laughs> Here he is again, this time low snap again. Did I hear a whistle? Yeah, they blew it dead. He must have had him down. Might have been in, inadvertent, but still. I think it was on the far side. The official blew the whistle. Let's see. I heard a whistle. Yeah, me too, and everybody kind of stopped. Stop more the Irish. Yeah, so it was another low snap. Go ahead, Marion. No, there definitely was a, a whistle, and the back jugs looked over at uh, the Fisher Catholic bench and apologized. Almost like, we heard the whistle. We're, we're going to get to it, but I'm not sure. It looks like it may be just a, a dead play, and they'll replay the down. Okay. So we got a do-over, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so inadvertent whistle. They will replay first and, first and ten here. I asked for a few of those in my coaching days, but <laughs> never got them. <laughs> Welsh again gives to Blair over that right guard, and he gets up across the 10. Good hard run. That's close to another first down. I think he might have it. Yeah, I, I think Coach Timmis's, you know concerns are legitimized here with watching Blair run behind Grabbins. Yeah. This Fisher Catholic team uh, kind of, you know, it's a very young team. Uh, they have a couple seniors in that starting lineup with Dolce and um, – you know, also in that starting lineup has been Boyden, who's a yeah. senior. But other than that, very, very young. Uh, just a few juniors, and the rest are freshmen and sophomores. Wow, this was that snap supposed to be directly to? I don't Not know. Sure. That was, what that? What do you think there, Marion? It looked like uh, Welsh was going for it, but it went right into the gut of <laughs> Danny Blair. You know, I, I'm not sure. And, again, it, with the low snaps and the off snaps, it might have just been a snap that was a little off target. Either way, <laughs> they were able to turn it in some positive yards yeah. there. Blair's been in the right spot, that's for sure. First and goal inside the five. Here is Danny Blair. This time, Heido Riley wraps him up, and he gets to about the two-yard line. Ball comes out, but they say he was down. Well, Fisher defense definitely has to swarm. Yes. They don't have the size or weight really just to battle off blocks and fight. They have to swarm to the ball. You see right here on the replay, he gives it, and he takes the initial hit there, but the rest have got to come in and help, Jared. Tell you, Heido Riley has really grown as a football player over the last year. Here's Welsh on the keeper, and he's got the touchdown around the right side. Yeah, that's a really good call. Yeah, they've gone left, left, middle, middle, and that time, Welsh just puts it in the gut and then takes it out and keeps it himself. Yeah, that's the option part of the offense that Coach Pardon talked about. Yeah, really great play call. As you saw, the entire Fisher Catholic line, yep. defensive line, just crashed down on when he put the ball in the running back's gut. Again, Welsh just able to pull it out, run around the end for six points. Rusty Hutchinson on to kick the extra point. And it is up, and it is good. So with 4.03 to play in the first quarter, Fisher or Fairfield Christian gets on the board first. They lead it 7-0. And tonight's first half scoreboard sponsor is Buckeye Toyota. Buckeye Toyota would like to wish all of the local athletes best of luck this season. Buckeye to Toyota is your hometown dealer that is here to help. Visit us online at mybuckeyetoyota.com. Hey, also as a reminder, you can find live and past games on our YouTube channel. Just search for CLN, your hometown connection, on YouTube to find games and other local programming. And while you're there, make sure to click subscribe so you won't miss any action. And if you're uh, on Facebook and Twitter, too, check us out on those social media platforms as well. Just search for Interphase Video Productions. Jared, I still had people asking from the week one game that we did, are, are you coming to show any more or do any more? <laughs> That's a great compliment to yeah, our producer and absolutely. people that do all this, you know. Speaking of our crew, Josh Messerly is uh, pushing all the buttons tonight. He's usually up here where I am tonight. And, uh, thanks, thank him for 
uh, allowing me to call play-by-play -play tonight. So he's down directing and producing tonight. Along with him is Donnie Ziegfeld and Shane Messina. Our camera guys tonight, Jason Roush, Tom Russo, and Jimmy Spires. There's Jason right there, our mid-level camera. O'Reilly and Ben McMeek for the Irish. Hyde O'Reilly and Bobby Bennett back deep for Fisher Catholic to receive the kickoff. It's going to be a short kick, be fielded and fallen on at the 30-yard line by 74, Caden Delabar. Did a nice job. That's not something he's used to doing. He's an offensive lineman, defensive lineman, and he did the right thing, just catch it and fall. Well, he's not sure to do what with the ball here, so you know he hasn't had a lot in his hands. <laughs> nope, did a good job. So the Irish trailing 7-0 with 4.03 to play in the first quarter. Get their second crack at the offense. They've got three receivers out to the right side, one to the left with Jack Wright standing right beside Grant Kiefer. Kiefer back to pass, looking over the middle. Hits Hyde O'Reilly in stride at the 50-yard line. Hyde O'Reilly, a foot race down to the 25 and finally brought down a nice job by Danny Blair to track him down. <clears throat> Watch wow. Blair not give up on this at all. Great catch. Way to go up and get it. And Hyde's not slow, but watch Blair track him down. Yeah, good hustle. Yeah. So the Irish right at the red zone at the 20-yard line, first and 10, trailing 7-0. Here's Jack Wright. Nice hole over on the right side. New lineman Nick Dolce helped out open that up, but it closed up in a hurry. Now we've got a flag coming in. It's going to be a hold on Fisher Catholic. Yeah, he just had a 48-yard gain. That's just about the last thing you need right there. That's going to back him up first and 20 back to the 30. First and 20 for the Irish. Kiefer, quick pass out to Bobby Bennett at the 30-yard line. Bennett runs into his own man, goes backwards, and is brought down no gain on the play. Yeah, really good good pursuit. Way to run after the football by the FCA defense right there. But you're right. Bobby's just got to go forward. Yeah. Bobby's a freshman, a pretty talented uh, athlete. He's missed the last game as he uh, suffered a concussion a couple of weeks ago, a nasty hit that – forced him to uh, take a ride in the ambulance to the hospital. It was a late hit, actually, and uh, against GCC, and so good to see him back tonight. We have a stoppage. Is that? I'm not sure what the, or just a, maybe a equipment problem. Equipment problem for Fisher Catholic. Second down and 20. Clock rolls down to 239 to play in the first quarter. O'Reilly, Cormier, and Bennett split out to the left side. Out to the right is Jacob Welsh. Here's Jack Wright, and again, just hit immediately, but Wright gets out of that tackle and picks up a few yards. Yeah, good effort by Jack right there. You know, and if nothing else, guys, that's going to keep this, fish, this uh, Fairfield Christian defense honest. You know, I know they're going to want to take play – plays down the field, take shots down the field with uh, O'Reilly. Um, and the, they, even if they're not able to get a whole lot of yards in the middle there, just at least running the ball with Jack Wright, keeping them honest, it's going to pay dividends later. Yeah. Third down and 16, under two minutes to play in the first quarter. Kiefer, pass complete to O'Reilly. Inside the 20, down to the 15. Going to be short of the first down by about five yards. Will they kick a field goal here? They've got an excellent field goal kicker in J.J. Vio, and they will bring on J.J. for the field goal attempt. Be a 32-yard attempt from right here out of the hold of Grant Kiefer. The snap of Simon Martin, I believe. 
And the kick is up, and he got it. So with 107 to play in the first quarter, the Irish are on the board. They trail at 7-3 after the 32-yard field goal by J.J. Vio, the senior. Yeah, anytime you get points at the end of a drive, you got to feel good. It wasn't what necessarily they wanted or thought they might get, but at least you got something. Mario, why don't you uh, kind of expound on that? Uh, you know, even if uh, it wasn't seven, it was something. That's got to be a little bit of a confidence booster. Absolutely, it's got to be a confidence builder just to go down the, the field and get points. And, and even on the first drive, you know, they had the error with the fumble. Uh, but, you know, that the fact that they're able to complete passes, it looks like, uh, you know, with the way they're, they're covering um, hi, hi, uh, O'Reilly over there, uh, looks like they're going to be playing off of him, at least for the time being. So he's able to run those slants, can get down the field uh, once he makes those catches. And uh, the Irish have, have a lot to, uh, to look forward to for the reindeer of the night on offense. These are two teams with uh, very good coaching staff. They've got a lot of knowledge uh, on the sideline for coach, uh, head coach Luke Timmis. He's got uh, Tim Bolin, who's uh, calling plays this year. He's uh, taken on the role of offensive coordinator. He's got Laith Fox, who was a teammate of Coach Timmis. Also, John Young, who uh, just celebrated last year. He's been in uh, high school football for over 60 years. And then, of course, Kyle Hesterman and Logan Loy. Over on the far side of the field with Fairfield Christian, and Marcus Pardon is the uh, head coach. He's got Ramon Conley, Scott Brinker, Brad Woodson, Phil McKnight. That's a familiar name. Nate Mettler, uh, Jason Gardner, and Aaron Rodgers. Uh, not the Aaron Rodgers that wears green and yellow on Sundays. But, uh, so both these teams with uh, very good, knowledgeable coaching staffs, and these teams are – you know, uh, kind of similar in, uh, you know, in ver very small schools trying to build programs, and these guys are the right men to lead the job. Ball loose on the field. And finally picked up Blair and brought up to about the 34-yard line, Danny Blair, on the return. Real quick story about uh, Timmis and Fox guys. You know, I played against those guys. They both graduated in 1997, and they were some players, let me tell you. They played hard every play. Were, were Timmis, particularly in the backfield, very, very tough to stop. I hated those guys in high school <laughs> until we played together in an all-star game. We all got together at, Le at Leif's uh, house after one of the practices, and they were the nicest guys in the world. Couldn't ask for two better guys and two better uh, coaches to have for these young men at Fisher Catholic. That's awesome. First and ten for the Knights. Welsh keeps it himself, goes around the left side, and still on his feet, breaking tackles. He's all the way across the 50 and finally dragged Welsh down by Hyde O'Reilly all the way over at about the 39-yard line. That's been a problem for the Irish all year is just arm tackling, and that's not going to get it done. No, it's a fundamental. It's the number one fundamental defensively. As you see the replay here, he just makes the fake, and he's got some room, but he's gone through one, two, Three, yeah. four, I mean, how high do you want me to count? Five, there, there we go. <laughs> I mean, you, you just got to get the guy on the ground. First and 10, Knights. Welsh to pass over the middle. And did he catch that? The umpire saying he did. Wow. Yeah. Hutchinson, Rusty Hutchinson slides for the catch and they're going to give it to him at about the 36. Even if he didn't guys he did a great job of acting like he did so he might have pulled the officials if he didn't. They're going to hurry up to the line obviously it doesn't matter there's no replay in high school but that was uh, impressive by Hutchinson. Welsh keeps it himself right up the middle gets away from one tackle finally Martin able to bring him down at about the 15. He, he's really being a weapon here run the ball. He is. Simon Martin on the tackle for the Irish. We've got uh, maybe, yeah, here we go, the replay of that last catch. Let's see if we can see it Throws right over the, the middle. The oh, From I don't know. Hard to see as 68 Nick Dolce kind of in the way there. Yeah, hard to that's tell. That's a tough one. The official was right on top of us. So we'll, we'll say, you know, we'll go with his call. Here's Todd Blair. Around the left side, Blair inside the 10 and pushed out of bounds at about the eight yard line. So the Blair brothers, Todd and Danny. Danny a sophomore, Todd just a freshman. And that's the end of the first period. And the first quarter will end with Fisher Catholic trailing Fairfield Christian seven to three here at Fulton Field. And let's say thanks to Buffalo Wild Wings. Thanks to Larry Tipton and the crew for great food, great service, and the best sports viewing in town. It's all at Buffalo Wild Wings in the Plaza Shopping Center on North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. 
So pretty good first quarter, uh, seven to three. Saw a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm sure that both coaches not happy with turnovers uh, no. and penalties, but you know both teams in the game right now. Yeah, and you know what it's going to come down to: Ken Fisher, Catholic, actually get some stops. I mean, Fairfield Christian's talented offensively. They have good players. We've seen two excellent runners. We know they have good receivers. Fisher Catholic's got to come up with some formula somehow defensively to stop them from scoring. Yeah. And, and really, this year, if you look at the scores of their games, yeah. they haven't been able to stop anybody. Right. I mean, the, you know, lost game number one, 63 to 14. Game number two, 40 to nothing. Game number three, 55 to nothing. Last uh, two weeks ago, lost to Grove City Christian, 70 to 31. And then last uh, last week, 63 to 21 to Worthington Christian. So even though their offense has been playing better, defense is just still not where it needs to be. Yeah, they, they, they've got to come up, like I said, with some kind of formula to get some stops, yeah. whatever it takes. Fairfield Christian inside the 10, second down and four as we begin the second quarter. Welsh with Blair to his right. Blair takes the handoff. Look at the hole right up the middle, and Blair runs right over top <laughs> of the freshman, Leo Hampshire, for the touchdown. There was no way Hampshire was going to be stopping Danny Blair when he's standing flat-footed and Blair's coming full speed at him. No, there wasn't any resistance at the point of attack there. You know, you see right here. Watch here, Jerry. Boom. Yeah. I mean, they pulled a guard, but he didn't even have no, to do he anything. No, didn't, he didn't. It's just got to have more resistance in there somehow. Hutchinson on to kick the extra point. And he got it. And the Knights... Extend their lead to 14 to three with 11.56 to play in the first half. Yeah, guys, one real quick observation that I might have. We talked about Fisher Catholic having a you know, little slider uh, build you know, with, with the defensive line in there. You know, sometimes it's better when you have a line like that can use their speed to their advantage. You know, sometimes just try to beat the offensive lineman to the spot. You, know, you kind of run a slant defense. That's a type of defense that we ran uh, at Ohio University because you know, we often, when we were playing bigger schools, uh, lacked in size. And just, you know, again, not to play you know, armchair quarterback here, uh, but when you have a, a defense, you know, defensive line that's a little smaller, sometimes using your speech, your advantage, beating the offensive line to the spot can, can sometimes make a difference. That's a good observation there, Marion. And that's definitely something that uh, Fisher Catholic, you know, they, they're obviously uh, the coaches know what they're doing. They're sure. wor working with what they've got. No, we're not, we're not um, suggesting they don't know sure. what they're doing. We're right. just watching and observing that the players need to come through somehow yep. and, and, and really get at it here. So, you know, still a lot of game to go. I mean, we're just four seconds into well, the second and, quarter. And, and wh how, where does this come into play, too? Marion, you can chime in with this, too. You know, when you, when you only have 20 kids on the roster and two of those are the punter and the kicker, you know, you're very thin roster-wise. It's, it's difficult to be physical in practice. Uh, yeah. we, we, and that's one of the reasons why Jack Wright is not playing defense tonight. He well, got injured in practice on a tackling drill on Wednesday. These are issues that you have at Division Seven a lot yeah. of times, just due to, to sheer numbers that you can't create some of those situations that are game-like. But, um, you know, I'm not a football coach uh, by any means, but somehow you've got to be able to do, you know, Coach Timmis brought that up in time to say, the fundamental yeah. things of blocking, tackling, you know, doing those things, they just have to get better at it. And it's, and it's not um, it's not glamour things. Right. Just know your assignment and then put forth the effort. Kiefer back to the pass. Out of the backfield, he hits right, right across the 35, up near the 40. That's a nice gain on first down. Yeah, yeah real good play. And, and real quick also what you were talking about, Jared, one of the things that you can't – you cannot repli replicate that game nine. speed. Yep. You know, a lot of times, you, you know, as you were saying, you, know, you can't really do a lot of stuff in practice because of the numbers. And people will say, well, just do technique stuff. You can, do, you know, do, teach technique, slow motion stuff, make sure everyone has a technique. And you can have the best technique in the world. When so you're not ready for that, that actual speed, you know, of the game, it can sometimes jump up on you, and it's very hard to prepare for if you're not actually doing it. Hand off to right, and this time he's going nowhere. He was wrapped up in the backfield by number 69. That's right Spencer right Verana. And I'm watching Nick Dolce, number 68, out there. He's grimacing and looks like unfortunately he's kind of looking at that hand which this is his first game back from a broken hand I'm hopeful that that's uh, not going to be something that 
hampers him. And unfortunately, it's his left-handed pitching hand. Oh. <laughs> Kiefer back to pass on third down and five, and either somebody ran the wrong route or Kiefer just rushed it because he was being rushed. It was intended for Kyle Cormier. And we're going to get our first look at Jake Kruner, the punter for Fisher Catholic. He has done a phenomenal job this year. He's had to, you know, get a lot of punts off uh, this season, some of them on bad snaps, some of them with guys breathing down his neck. And this is his first year he's ever punted, but he's done a really nice job. He come, comes from the soccer team, Kruner, the, the senior, doing the punting duties this year. There's one of the snaps I'm talking about, and Kruner still gets it away. And it takes a Fisher Catholic roll, and it will be down at the 30-yard line. Four rolls dead at the 30-yard line. And you'll take a 39-yard punt. Sure. First and 10 for the Knights from the Flip 30. the field position here. Now if they can just get to somehow together and, and get a stop. Yeah. Give themselves a chance. But I tell you, FCA looks like a they're in pretty good rhythm offensively, Jared. Fisher Catholic only has 10 guys on the field right now. Dolce out. They're sending my son Stewart on the field, who's started and played defense all year, has not played tonight so far. And he missed the tackle right there. But this is Danny Blair going around the right side. He misses another one. Danny Blair up the far side, and he's got one man to beat. That's Kiefer. Kiefer knocks him out of bounds at the 23-yard line. What a run by Danny Blair. He is a tough runner. Now they look good offensively. First and 10 at the 25. Welsh again with Blair right beside him. He's got three receivers out to the left. Welsh keeps it right up the middle. Breaking tackles left and right. Wow. It's a lot of arms reaching in. Hey, the players are there, and, you know, as a coach, that's what you want them to do, be in the right assignment in the right place, but they have to make the play. The players have to make the play. Second down and two coming up for Fairfield Christian as the clock rolls down to 9.39 and counting in this first half. New runner into the ballgame right now, giving Danny Blair a break. That's number one, Ezra Embry, standing beside Welsh. Welsh takes it up the middle again. And Welsh just dragging guys with him inside the five-yard line. So first and goal for Fairfield Christian. Right now, it's just, it's just the Welsh and... And Blair show, really. Those guys are tough to bring down. Good hard yep. runners. Yep, they are. And and they're getting just what they want. You know, they're getting the the blocks and, and the line play. Good timeout here by Fisher. Timeouts are brought to you by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Learn more at carriagecompany.com. Some other games uh, going on around the area tonight uh, that we will be Maybe trying to track in just a little bit. Uh, other games in the Mid-State League, Cardinal Burn Union at 4-1 and one is at Miller. It's Payton City, West Virginia at Millersport. In the Mid-State League, Buckeye, Bloom Carroll at Liberty Union. That should be a good one in the Buckeye. Circleville is at Amanda Clear Creek. Fairfield Union at Logan Elm, who, man, what's, uh, how about Logan Elm? The turnaround Terry Holbert has done down there with the Braves. Done a good job. 4-1 and one right now. Yeah. And really, I mean, I was talking with uh, Assistant Principal Nelson Karshner over at uh, General Sherman. He's a Logan Elm guy, and we, we were talking today. In all reality, Logan Elm could could come into that Bloom Carroll game in a few weeks at 7-1 and one, and Bloom Carroll at 7-1. and one. Well, That would be very interesting. Yes, it would. Get to some other games uh, going on in just a moment as Fairfield Christian out of the timeout, first and goal inside the five, and a nice job this time. Ezra Embry is wrapped up. Embry. Trying to see who it was. It's one of those interior defensive linemen. I think that might have been Caden Delabar, the freshman, on the tackle. I think 77 Clum was in there as well. Okay, that's, it. Nice that's Ella Clum. Ella Clum decided to play football. She was a cheerleader for the first three games. 
Wow. Or first two games and decided, uh, you know what, I'd rather play football. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. Oh. Here's Embry again up the middle. And brought down right about the two. Well, those are two good defensive plays yeah. for the Irish right there. A little more resistance, a little more aggression. So third down and goal. They'll, sit, they'll spot it at the three-yard line. Welsh running to his right. And he gets to the goal line. I don't see any hands. No, I don't either. Stood him up. Stopped him right at the goal line. That was close. They're going to face a fourth and goal from inside the one. Marion, you're right on it. Yeah, yeah. And it, he was just dragged from the back. Couldn't see which player did it, but he was great. And let me just say, how how great and how smart was that timeout that Coach Tim has oh, yeah. called right before this goal line, potential goal line stand here. Uh, Irish doing a fantastic job. We'll see if they can get it done on fourth. So here we go, fourth and goal in the inside the one-yard line. Handoff to Blair, and no doubt about it, Blair's right up the middle for the touchdown. I mean, that's who I'd give it to. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Every time. He's pretty good, huh? But especially in that situation. Yep. See here on the replay, and just block, up front line did a nice job. Hutchinson to kick the extra point. It is up and it's good, but there's a flag. I think uh, Fisher jumped early. Yep. So they'll decline that, or can they? If they blew, if they blew the whistle early, they may make him kick it again. So they will decline it, and then the uh, extra point is good to put Fairfield Christian up 21 to three with 7:14 to play in the first half. In the OCC Buckeye tonight, Lancaster is at Central Crossing. Lancaster 0 and 5, Central Crossing 2 and 3. That should be a good good football game. Yeah, the Gales have a you know they really have gone through a gauntlet. I mean they've played a very tough early season schedule, yeah. and um, they've got some games on the schedule they can get if they continue to improve. Pickerington Central. When's the last time you heard Pickerington Central at two and three? Yeah, not playing well. Newark two and three. Yeah, and but it's they're different two and three. <laughs> yeah, that's true. A that's little bit. True. Uh, in the OCC Ohio Pickerington North at four and one. That one loss to Pickerington Central. Uh, they are at Westerville Central tonight. And, you know, I was looking at um, all the uh, the the playoff potentials. Yeah. And, and what what really stuck out to me in that Division One. You know, I mentioned Pickerington Central. They are all the way down right now at 10th. Look who's number one, Grove City. Yeah. At 4-1. and one. Yeah, Coach Waite's done a great job up there. Um, believe it or not, he used to be the head basketball coach. That's right. Yeah. How good's that? Yeah. I, I know Coach Waite's uh, uh, through the basketball avenue, but I, I'd love to talk to him sometime about how, how he got into that and got that. But he's got it going. Yeah, he does. They've had really good baseball the last few years. Uh, with Ryan Alexander being the baseball coach here. Yep, you're right. You know, the thing is that with the addition of teams, you know, that region, Jared, almost everybody's going to get in. Yep, you're right. Here's Bobby Bennett. He ran a long way and didn't g <laughs> didn't gain anything, I don't think. Let's check those, uh, those standings, the regional standings. This uh, is the Division 7, Region 27. Yeah, you can see these right here. 16 get in, right? Yep. So it's going to be a battle. Yeah. For that spot. I mean, there's an opportunity for some people that may have not had a good regular season to get a chance to play and play. And every bit of experience you get with a young group right. is a good thing. Right. Regardless of the outcome yeah, of that one playoff mean, game. It means nothing. Yeah. It is good to get in and play more games and more practice, have yep. more practice. First and 10 for the Irish, trailing 21 to three with 7.07 to play in the first half. Kiefer looking to pass, hits Hyde O'Reilly, gets a good block. O'Reilly, oh! Ooh. If he could have gotten out of that shoestring yeah. tackle, he might have been gone. Hutchinson on this stop for Fairfield Christian. And I like how Kiefer threw that. He put that on the money. Yeah. Hit him in the numbers. Good catch and run right there by Riley. And the, the Knights had a full out blitz on guys. They had 
Good call. Uh, uh, getting the ball away there just again if he gets out of that one tackle might have had something there and yeah, we see a replay here that's you know that's the best thing one of the best things you can call versus that, that pressure blitz like that first and ten for the Irish after the completed pass to O'Reilly Kiefer again looking to pass this time he hits Luke Carnes and Carnes up to the 43 yard line. Again, nice throw and catch right there. Guys, I've been really impressed with Key for the jump that he made from last year to this year that I'm seeing. And Jared, I'm sure you know it better than anyone. I mean, it's been really impressive. He's getting rid of the ball, playing with confidence, knows where he's going with the football, delivering it on time and with accuracy. Yeah, when he gets time, that's been the key. When he gets time, he, he and he's getting some time tonight, more, than, more so than he has the rest of the season. Here's Jack Wright on the reception. Wright breaking a tackle, getting to midfield. And he's got a first down up to the 49 of Fairfield Christian. But I, I think the thing too, you know, Marion, you got you got to remember he's just a sophomore. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. mean, playing eighth grade, then varsity the next year, boy, that 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 is some jump. I don't care what division you're in. And he wasn't a quarterback in junior high either. <laughs> he um, St. Mary's did not have a team. He went to St. Mary's, but he lives in Bloom Carroll district. So he played junior high football at Bloom Carroll and was not a quarterback. Wow. Last year as a freshman was the first time he started playing quarterback. Good for him. He keeps working at it. He's going to be pretty doggone good. Yeah, I agree. First and ten for the Irish, putting together a little drive here. Kiefer back to pass. Lofts one out. He's got a man down there, but it's intercepted. No, he dropped it. Good defense by the receiver. Yes, it was. Who was that? Was that Nia? It's Hutchinson. Man, he's had a good game. Along with kicking the extra points, he's got a couple receptions, and there's a big defensive play for him. Yeah, real versatile player. Yeah. See the throw here. Just too a much air in it. Yeah. Yep. Got to, got to throw it longer, a little lower. Good job by O'Reilly to become a defender there. He did a great job of pulling his arm away. Second and ten. Three of the four receivers are freshmen on the field who have been on. Actually, check that. It's two of the four. Wow. Here's Bobby Bennett, one of those freshmen. Bennett up across the 30 to about the 26-yard line. Well, I, 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 I don't know how many people would have taken the odds of that getting in there, but yeah. he, 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 you know, he, he threaded a needle right there. Yeah, he did. Well, that's a big-time catch, guys. I hope you can see that on the replay. He snagged that from behind and tra in traffic. Good throw. Wow. R he what did. A great concentration by Bobby to pull that in. Great defense, too. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the defense put on by Hudson Harper. Just a really good catch by the freshman, Bobby Bennett. Bennett had to come out to get shoulder pads fixed. Kiefer's pass complete to a – oh, O'Reilly took a huge hit. And are they going to say that was an incomplete pass or a no. fumble? It was a fumble. He's counting to catch and a fumble. Wow. Took a big hit over on the far side. I didn't see who well, delivered just, it. We'll see it right here. Yeah, he just turned in immediate contact. Watch him just turn here, Jared. And as soon as he started to get his shoulders up the field, I think that's the right call. Was that? That's number, is that 12? Number 12. For Fairfield Christian, that's Ben Hopple. That's a big hit. That's a backbreaker of a play with the rhythm that they had yep. going. Kiefer yep. was throwing the ball. It, it, that's a tough one for Fisher. That's two turnovers for the Irish. And some confusion defensively for Fisher Catholic right now, not knowing who's supposed to be on the field and who's not. I will say they, the, the personnel they've had tonight is not the same as what it's been all year. Really? Yeah. There's guys playing different positions. and well, They're searching. And you know what? I, I'm not sure it's all bad uh, where you're standing at this point with freshmen and sophomores. Like you said, they're so heavy with underclassmen right. that, you know, they're not going to get better just by getting older. But the kids go to work yeah. from this rest of the season on into the offseason, they will get better. 
both of these schools, Fairfield yes. Christian and Fisher Catholic, are excited about the future because they both have pretty good junior high programs right now. Uh, Fairfield, Fairfield Christian's team and St. Mary's played uh, earlier this week in a game up at uh, up at Fisher Catholic, a, a really good football game. They both have some talent coming up well, in that's the good to younger hear. levels. Yeah, that's good to hear. And, that, and that's how you establish a good program. Yeah. They have somebody uncovered out here. Wow, completely uncovered. Simon Martin going to slide over and cover him as the handoff goes to Blair. He just got tripped up at about the 24-yard line. Yeah, the interior of the Fisher Blair defensive line is doing a better job now, Jared. They're not getting stood up so much. Stay low. Dig in. You know, you got to make them do something else. Welsh, back to pass, deep ball down the far side. What a catch by Ben Hopple. Hopple going to score. Nice pass from Welsh and Hopple. Man, what a catch. He went over top of the defender. He did. To haul that one in. Ben Hopple, the senior. Look Watch here. this. Welsh had good time to throw. Sure did. He just went over top. Yeah, he did. Used his size. We don't know Devin heights and weights. That's not listed, but he's got a little size advantage yeah, there does. on the corner, definitely. Extra point is up and good for Hutchinson. Makes it 28 to 3. 338 to play in the first half. And, guys, we've been giving a lot of credit, rightfully so, to Grant Kiefer. He's been playing a nice game tonight despite not putting a whole lot of points on the board. But I tell you, uh, I have really also been impressed with with Gabe Welsh. I mean, he is really, really yeah. showing some nice arm talent, has a good, strong arm, has ran the ball well. Again, very kind of deceptive with his speed and yep. the way he moves down the field. But he's been effective in the run game as well. And, again, you saw with that pass that there, that, that long completion, he's able to deliver the, deliver the ball down the field with with power. Yeah, we got to keep in mind, too, that he started the year as the backup quarterback. Yeah. Right. Zy Pardon was the uh, the starter, and he went down with yep. an injury. Yep, and he's just a junior. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be back next year. And, you know, like, to, you know, add on to what Marion said, he's he looks confident. Yes, he does. He's relaxed, poised. Well, and he's getting time to throw, too. That uh, offensive line is doing a great job giving him time to pass. and. That, that, uh, that helps the confidence quite a bit. In any sport, pressure will always change the outcome. Yeah. It's alumni cheerleader night here at Fisher Catholic as it is homecoming. At halftime, they will have the uh, homecoming court and uh, name the homecoming queen and king. And so we've got some alumni cheerleaders down on the track. Hutchinson's kick going to be taken by Bobby Bennett at the 27-yard line. And Bennett gets up to the 32. And, and that's where Fisher Catholic will go on offense once again. Blair on the tackle for the Knights. So Keeper trots out after he gets the uh, plays from the coaches. Well, they had great rhythm last time, you know, un until the end down there with the turnover. See if they can get it back again, move the football. Kiefer looking to pass. He lobs one out to Jack Wright, just overthrew him a little bit. Checking some scores just before halftime here in uh, other games. Circleville leads Amanda Clear Creek 21 to 12 that game in the second quarter. It's Bloom Carroll all over Liberty Union 28 to 7 in the second quarter. Central Crossing leads Lancaster 15 to 6 in the second quarter. No score yet. Millersport uh, hosting Peyton City, and uh, there's no score listed for Burn Union and Miller. We'll continue to check those throughout the night. Kiefer back to pass over the middle. And through the hands of Hyde O'Reilly, the intended receiver, he's felt the pressure there. I think Jimmy Schmidt's coming across in the in the middle of the field there. He's running that. I don't know, Marion. That's a short post or just a deep slant. But they've they've caught him a couple times on it. 
Yeah, it's just a deeper slant. Again, it, it's it's a route that's de uh, highly dependent on timing. And when you run it correctly, as I, Jerry Rice used to always say, the route is impossible to stop. And you can <laughs> tell that uh, O'Reilly uh, has, has really mastered that route and had, has done some damage on it tonight and throughout the season. And Fisher Catholic moved early. That's Bobby Bennett over on this near side. Now that makes a third and 10, third and 15 for the Irish. Third and 15 for the Irish. Kiefer oh. looking to pass, has O'Reilly. O'Reilly's going to have to do a lot with his legs right here and get some blocks. He's doing something. He's got the first down. Wow, what an That's what O'Reilly's been most impressive with all year <laughs> is what he does after the catch. Third and 15 and pick that up. That's a super effort. Yes, with, it was. With running with the ball after the catch. You see Just the replay right here. Look where he right catches here. this. Tackled by couch. He caught it at what? He needed 12 yards. The 31 or the 41. About the 30, 31 yard yeah, line. Yeah, 31. Yeah, need to get up to the 42. What an effort. And he drug a guy with yeah, him. Yeah, he did. For about three yards. Great effort by the sophomore Hyde O'Reilly. Yeah, remind me of a rodeo right there. <laughs> so we have a timeout on the field. Timeouts tonight are brought to you by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. And we will tell you that coming up at halftime, we'll have our Halftime band show brought to you by Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Crematory and Monuments, family owned and operated since 1889. Check them out at funeralhome.com. The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, respect for tradition, regard for change. Halftime band show will also be brought to you by Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do too. The difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. First and 10 for Fisher Catholic. Kiefer, wow. That was dangerous. That ball could have been intercepted. He just lofts it out for Jack Wright. And Wright was hit immediately and actually lost a couple yards. Yeah, but Blair sniffed that the whole way. Yes, he did. Give him credit. Yeah. Actually, that's, that that 11? That's, that's Schmitz. Schmitz. Yeah, that was Schmitz. I thought it was Blair initially. Yeah, the font on these well. letters make it a little hard to see, guys. <laughs> You're right. I'm, I'm having trouble down here on the field, so I'm sure you have to have it trouble is a, on that It booth. is a different type of font on those numbers on Fairfield Christian. Yeah, we've had too much font talk already tonight. <laughs> what a catch there by Bobby Bennett. Yep. Bobby Bennett. And a strange hit as he's <laughs> dragged down there. Harbor and you heard some, maybe some people in the stands. That, they're just a little bit cautious because Bobby Third took a – watch, watch this at the end the here. It's very similar. Ooh, wow. That's very similar to the play that – he got knocked out on and had to take a trip to the uh, hospital two weeks ago. Third down and one. Here's Jack Wright. Has the first down. Jack Wright trying to get to the outside. To the 40, the 35, and Wright tackled out of bounds at inside the 30-yard line by Blair. And Jack Wright slow to get up. Blair on the tackle for the night. Boy, guys, and I don't know if you can see on that replay, that shoulder is really yeah. bothering yeah. him. And Coach Timmis right is, is not real happy about the fact that he was dragged down when he was out. Look yeah. here. I mean, he's way over. Yeah, he's past the white line. Way past the white and, and he was clearly giving himself up, going out of bounds. And, and you know, it, Jack normally wouldn't give himself up like that, but I think he knows he's, he's nursing his shoulder there. So Yep, he's limited. Flag on the play. Offsides. That is on Fairfield Christian. Five yard penalty, first down. So that'll move the ball up a little bit closer for Fisher Catholic. Inside of two minutes to play in the first half, they trail it 28 to three. Well, they've moved the ball, Jared, uh, you know, all evening here pretty much, exception of I think an early one where they yeah. had to punt, but they've moved the football down the field, just haven't been able to finish.
First and five for the Irish. And a handoff to right, and he has swarmed as soon as he takes the handoff. Backs him up. Lost about a yard on that play. Mari on that defensive front there for Fairfield Christian. Spencer Varana, 69, getting in there. He's, he's, uh, we called his name a couple times tonight. Yeah, yeah, he's done a nice job. Really, the entire defensive line, again, they're, they're running, uh, you know, five defensive linemen, you know, uh, at the line of scrimmage, and yeah. it's really causing trouble, you know, causing, you know, clogging up those running lanes for Wright and the rest of the Irish. Kiefer looking to pass, has pressure right away, directing some traffic, throws across his body to O'Reilly. O'Reilly at the goal line. Did he haul it in? He caught the he ball. He did. Wow. I think he's down just short. Down at the one-yard line. Yeah. That's, that's a heck of a throw wow. by Kiefer running left. Though. Yes. I wasn't sure he was going to get his shoulders squared enough to get it off. Yeah, I know. That may be the best throw we've seen all year, guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Watch him. He'll, he'll kind of direct traffic. We saw it a little yeah. bit late, but look at the catch by O'Reilly. You're right, down at the one-yard line. Yeah. But heck of a play there. I don't think that's the way it was drawn up. That's just a backyard football play right there. Here's Wright diving into the end zone for the touchdown. Big drive for the Irish it right was. there. Give them a little bit of good, feel good. And so J.J. Vio will come on to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Kiefer. There's Jack Wright coming off the field, and he is ginger on that left shoulder, isn't he? You would be. Yeah. I mean, just two days ago. Yeah, an issue. Kick is up, and it is good. So with 108 to play in the first half, Fairfield Christian's lead now cut down to 21 or 28 to 10. Nice little drive there put together by the Irish. Big play, the big pass play down to the one to O'Reilly. There's the Fisher Catholic Band. I tell you what, there are not a lot of members in that band, but they are they're really good. They sound good, put out a nice sound. 16 total members in that Fisher Catholic Band. Now, as you know, regardless of any extracurricular, it takes a lot of dedication. Yes, it does. And um, I'm always impressed and, and glad to see all the kids involved. So the Irish uh, will kick off. Still some time here, I tell you, with... Fairfield Christian with the uh, potency of some of their offensive weapons. This is this is a lot of time. They could put another score on the board before halftime. Yeah, they have a really nice offensive team with, with several people yeah. that can hurt you. We've seen it. For Fisher Catholic, they would love to get a stop as they will get the ball to start the second half. You know, the, the thing that Coach Pardon brought up this week that we had a Irish. chance to talk about was they are practicing consistent, he said. He said, we, we were not early in the year and it showed yeah and he said we are practicing consistent and can you then take the practice and carry it over to the game night on friday night and he, he felt they did that last week so he was really excited about how much better he felt they're getting just because of their practice mm -hmm. habits jj vo to kick it off for the irish Going to be a short kick. This is Blair on the return. The younger Blair, and he's making some guys miss him out there, and he's finally going to be brought down, but all the way up near the 50-yard line. I just, I don't know. J.J. Vio has a leg. He, he can kick it to the end zone. I'm not quite sure why they're not letting him kick it to the, to the end zone. Because now you give uh, Fairfield Christian <laughs> some great field position but with a 57 field. seconds to play here. Definitely a shorter field. So first and 10. Welsh will have Blair, I believe. Or is that Ezra Embry back in there? It is Blair. And this time Welsh is going to be sacked in the backfield. The first man to get him was Delabar. And then Gage Armstrong, and now a late flag comes in. Are they going to get a late hit? They are. Welsh is slow to get up. It's 
It's a personal foul, late hit on Fisher Catholic. Somebody did come in there late. I'm not sure. Let's see if we have a replay on that. We're going to get a timeout on the field. Fairfield Christian going to take one with 47 seconds to play. Timeout. And Coach Tempest is not going to his team. He's going to the official. He wants to have a little word with the referee here. Let's see the play here. So Gage Armstrong makes the tackle there, and then Ella Klum comes in. I think that's what got the penalty. I don't know about that, though. Speed of the game stuff, I, you know what I mean? I know. If we could see it fast, I mean, maybe. Hey, I've never been out there with a hanky, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not criticizing anybody that does that job. Yeah. You know, I mean, it looks like you yeah, said speed you know of the what? game when you are there. Maybe so. I, I don't know. But here we go. That gives uh, Fairfield Christian first and two. Not too often you hear no first and two. Guys, I actually saw some still photography by our, our, the Fisher Catholic uh, cameraman here. Um, things that might have been a call where they twisted the helmet as he was going oh, down. So maybe that it may wasn't Clum. Maybe yeah, it so was. not, not a late hit, but okay. as opposed to twisting the helmet on the quarterback as they were taking him down. But what's ironic about that is just the last possession that Fisher Catholic had, yeah. Fairfield Christian did the exact same yep. thing. Oh, that one would have gone maybe for six. It's through the hands. Another flag. I think they got a tender receiver. Roughing the passer. Well, he got hit pretty good. He got him to the head. Wow. I don't think the hit was that late, Jared. I, I, I think he hit him in the head. I was happened to watch it here. They called it on Drew Matty, 55. Let's see. I mean, we, we get an opportunity to see if he he, he did. Actually, he actually called helmet to helmet, didn't he? Well, on the he on, made the on motion. The, uh, it was okay. quite a quite a hit. Okay. I'll, yeah. He I'd got like him see. good. You here can see is. here our replays. Oh, a little soon. Maybe back here. Watch him get rid of it. I can't I tell on that yeah, whether I don't know if he got his head up under his chin. You don't know. The referee's right there. So back-to-back -back personal foul penalties for Fisher Catholic. Gives uh, Fairfield Christian excellent field position. Here's Danny Blair breaking tackles inside the 15 and down to about the 12-yard line. The clock stopped at 34 seconds, long enough to move the chains. Well, I'm telling you, he runs like he's just been let out of a corral, yep. like a wild horse. Now they wind the clock. It's down to 30. Welsh again hands off to Blair. Blair breaks one tackle. Blair going to take it to the end yep. zone. Touchdown, pretty much untouched. Yep, never even got, got <laughs> any contact already, Jared. And what did I say? With a just over a minute left, I said this this team can score in a hurry. They, they can, and they're aided by the penalties, obviously. You can see here, watch him pick his spot. And then he just turns it on, Jared. Yep. The key He's word there, Shu, is like he just picks his way through the line <laughs> yep. there. On the, you know, right. Just finds a hole, you know, has nice patience, and once he hits that burst, it's a second gear. You are so correct. He's a good-looking back. Mm -hmm. Hutchinson to kick the extra point. And it, <laughs> it got over the crossbar. <laughs> Make it 35-10 to 10 with 15 seconds to play in the first half. So a couple of back-to-back -back personal foul penalties really really hurt Fisher Catholic there. Yeah, nothing flagrant, just hustling. You know, yeah. I mean, that, that happens, Jared. When you're playing hard and, you know, maybe you're a step slow on a play or something, that, that stuff happens. There wasn't anything cheap or dirty right, about right. it. It's just hard play. And um, unfortunate for the Irish, you know, they, they just – they have no confidence defensively at all. You right. can see it. There's, yep, there's none right. there, and, and maybe rightfully so, mm -hmm. you know. Well, and the other thing, you know, they had just scored that touchdown, had a little bit of momentum going, you know, in, into halftime. If they could have kept them out of the end zone, but, again, the short kick, the two penalties, and now 
the Knights get back on the board, now have a 35 to 10 lead. It's just just does not a good job for the momentum of no. the Irish. Nick Dolce has not returned to the game for Fisher Catholic. I think he's done. He's got an ice bag on that left hand, which is the one that uh, he's just now that tonight first game back from a broken hand. Kickoff takes a roll and taken by Bobby Bennett at the 24-yard line. And Bennett will be brought down at the 35 with nine seconds to play in the first half. Well, he plays with no fear, I will tell you that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he doesn't. I mean, you know, getting to see him for a half here. I, if I'm if I'm related, I'm trying to say, get away from some of those guys, Bob, because he's, he's not big in stature at all. <laughs> well, there's really not a lot of guys on that wearing green right. that are big in stature. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're correct. First and ten for Fisher Catholic with nine seconds to play in the half. Kiefer will hand it off to Wright. Wright. With a nice little run here on first down. And that will finish it up for the first half. So Fairfield Christian with an excellent first half. They lead it 35-10 to 10 here at Fulton Field over Fisher Catholic. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, we will have our halftime band show, which is going to be brought to you by Frank E. Smith Funeral Home and also Fairfield Federal. Stay tuned. That's all coming up next on the High School Football Game of the Week.
Now presenting our first senior attendant and escort, Ellie Bump, daughter of Kevin and Casey Bump. She participates in cross country and track. She is a member and vice president of the Irish for Life Club. Escorting Ellie is senior Noah Sharp. Noah is the son of Will and Tasha Sharp. He participates in cross country, indoor and outdoor track. He is a member of the Irish for Life Club. Now presenting our second senior attendant and escort, Anna Kenny, daughter of Sean and Tracy Kenny. She participates in volleyball and is a member of Irish for Life Club and Fairfield County Youth Advisory Committee. Escorting Anna down the field is senior Isaac Hill. Isaac is the son of Scott and Sharon Hill. He participates in cross country, track, and Chai Wando. He is a member and president of the Irish for Life Club and a member of student council. <laughs> now presenting our third senior attendant and escort, Sophie Morrison, daughter of Ken and Laura Morrison. She is a member of the quiz team and escorting Sophie is senior Liam Hope. Liam is the son of Ruth Hope. He participates in track and is a member of the quiz team. Right now, our Student Council Advisor, Mrs. Katie Gillum, is presenting our senior attendants and escort with wrap bouquets. We ask now that each senior unwrap theirs, revealing the purple bouquet and the homecoming king and queen of 2022. And that person is the Fisher Catholic Queen, Sophie Morrison, and Fisher Catholic King, Liam Hope. Again, congratulations to our King and Queen, as well as all of the members of our homecoming court this evening. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, The Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, The Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. Hi, 
I'm Carol Whittington, and I would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, located at 1540 Hubbard Drive in Lancaster. We are a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio and Hawking Hills area since 2003. Graduations with a personal touch, weddings with a personal touch, corporate events with a personal touch. Please call us today for all your party rental needs, 740-689-6991. Bay Food Market is Fairfield County's source for high-quality, locally sourced meats. The meat case is always full of quality, fresh beef, pork, gourmet burgers, and gourmet brats for you and your family to enjoy. Bay Food Market cures and smokes their own hams, bacon, and sausage. Visit Bay Food Market at the corner of Maple and Walnut Streets in Lancaster and discover the Bay Food Market difference. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., closed Thursday and Sunday. Bay Food Market, proudly serving Fairfield County families for more than 90 years. Greetings from Fairfield DD. We are excited to share the joys of the fall season with you. As we move into cooler weather, we hope to see you at Football Friday Nights and the County Fair. As you enjoy the season of changing colors, we also want to remind you of the change we hope to see. We pursue a vibrant community where everyone leads a fulfilling life and everyone makes meaningful contributions. Don't forget to stop by our social purpose enterprise, Art and Clay on Main and Square 7 Coffee House, to paint a new piece for your table this season or enjoy a handcrafted fall beverage. Hi, this is Anna Tobin from Meals on Wheels of Fairfield County. At Meals on Wheels, we provide in-home services to reduce isolation and hunger, empowering caregivers in their role of caring for a family member or friend. This month, we are really excited to be chosen once again as the recipient of Buckeye Toyota Buckeye Cares program. That means Buckeye Toyota will make a donation to Meals on Wheels with every vehicle sold this month. With the high cost of fuel, this support is very much appreciated. Thank you, Buckeye Toyota. You walked down the aisle and promised happily ever after. Sometimes happily ever after means ending a relationship. We know the conversations are not easy. Deciding what's best for you, your children, and your next steps takes work and communication. At Dagger Law, we know there are no monsters in a divorce, only people trying to find their way. Local, trusted, experienced. Dagger Law. Hi, my name is Josh Lazier with the Lancaster Fire Department, here to talk to you about Narcan. Narcan is the light in the darkness of the opioid epidemic. It's a medication designed to rapidly reverse opioid overdoses. It can very quickly restore normal respirations to a person whose breathing has slowed or stopped as a result of overdosing with heroin or prescription opioid pain medications. It can be carried by police, EMTs, firefighters, even family members. While Narcan stops the effects of an overdose, it does not stop addiction and is not a cure. If there are opioids in your home, Narcan should be there too. Narcan is considered to be a very safe drug and can save lives. And in Ohio, it's available without a prescription. Your life matters and we're here to help because you matter. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. I want a doctor who listens to me. From primary care to specialty medicine, we put your needs first by treating you like a person, not a number. Our primary care team will help you identify your healthcare needs and set goals for success, regardless of where you are in your wellness journey. We care for patients of all ages, with offices that are close to you. Whatever you're searching for, you can find it at Fairfield Medical Center. How much can you afford to spend on a home? That's a good question. I'm Desi DeJohn, Assistant Vice President and Mortgage Loan Officer at the Savings Bank in Lancaster. It's important to know how much you can afford before you contact a real estate agent. Factors such as income, credit score, 
debt and down payment can help determine how much a bank can lend you to buy a home. Getting pre-qualified is the best way to find out how much you can afford to spend on a home. You can apply to pre-qualify online anytime at the savingsbankohio.bank. Next, we will feature seniors Nathan Shea, Emma McCready, and Emily Neighbor on our next piece, This Is Me. show this evening we present a medley of never enough and from now on 
beginning with a solo by Nathan Shea. The Fisher Catholic Marching Irish is under the direction of Mrs. Judy Rare. Thanks so much for your support, and go Irish! Swing into the carriage company and check out our sweet deals. If you're looking for the best selection of clean, quality used vehicles, look no further than the carriage company. You'll feel secure with your purchase, knowing all vehicles undergo an extensive safety and service check prior to the sale. And all vehicles can be viewed online at carriagecompany.com. The Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Oh, wait! 
YVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, the Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, The Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. Welcome back to Fulton Field, where your halftime score is Fairfield Christian 35, Fisher Catholic 10. Hope you enjoyed our halftime show. Uh, Shu, I tell you what, this is a, a game that's had, had a little bit of everything. We've had, we've had uh, some uh, high-powered offense. We've had some turnovers. We've had some you know, penalties that have, that have hurt teams, but uh, a lot of action in that first half. Uh, very much so. And, you know, if Fisher can just, you know, take care of the football, they move the ball well the first half, um, Got to get some stops defensively somehow. Find a way to do that. Uh, for Fairfield Christian, they got to make sure they don't let up. Keep pushing the pedal and playing well. They, they are a very impressive offensive group. Let's go down to Marion uh, on the field. Marion, uh, from Coach Temis' perspective, you know, you're down 35-10, to 10, a game that you really hope that maybe you had a shot at. What are you telling your team uh, at halftime? Well, first and foremost, you just got to eliminate, uh, you know, beating yourself, all the penalties and, and mistakes that Fisher's had have really cost them some drives. You know, it hasn't been a, a situation where they haven't been able to move the ball. They have been able to do that. They have been able to establish some drives. They put a couple uh, opportunities to score on the board. They just need to be more consistent, eliminate the mistakes, and see where the second half takes them. Kickoff is angled over to the far side, taken by Bobby Bennett up the far sideline. And Bennett gets up near the 40-yard line. And that's where Fisher Catholic will go on offense to start this second half, trailing 35-10. to 10. Glad to have you along with us on this football Friday night on a uh, chilly, chilly <laughs> night. Uh, Shoe, you had to break out the jacket here Man, to start the second half. Haven't said that for a while. <laughs> so we'll see what Fisher Catholic can come up with here to start this second half. Boy, they desperately would like to start with seven points on the board in this first drive. Kiefer back to pass. Quick hitter over to Bennett. It's overthrown. Just out of the reach of Bobby Bennett. Bennett, for Bennett. Some other scores at halftime. It's Circleville over Amanda, 29-12. Bloom Carroll all over Liberty Union in the third quarter, 42-17, or 42-7, that is. Central Crossing extends their lead over Lancaster, 21-7 in the third quarter. Um, and we still have no score listed for... Payton City and Millersport, Burn Union and Miller. Logan Elm leads Fairfield Union 13 to seven in the third quarter. So Fairfield Union hanging tough with Logan Elm. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me after we saw them early in the year and how they play and how hard they play. Right to the ball carrier. On second down is Jack Wright on the carry, but just nothing there. He actually lost a yard. Jack Wright, very similar to Jack Tenza. You remember last year, uh, Fisher Catholic had the three Jacks in yes. the back. They called it the Jack Field, as they had Jack Wright, Jack uh, Tenza, and Jack Carpenter. Um, and, you know, Wright and Tenza are very similar, but just uh, you know, Fisher lost a lot on the offensive line. They lost almost the entire starting offensive line. It's so kind of rebuilding that, and just hasn't been a whole lot there for Jack to run behind. He makes a nice catch there. <laughs> One-handed, but it's not going to be enough for the first down. Again, like you said earlier in the game, that's just kind of a backyard play. <laughs> we yeah. threw it up, and you see here on the replay, nice effort, get away from the pressure. What a, what a catch. <laughs> Haul it in. Yeah. <laughs> and Heido Riley limping as he's lining up for this punt. Confusion again on the punt as they send Stewart out, who's never been on punt team, and this punt's blocked. And it's going to be taken in for a touchdown. That's uh, Hutchison. 
Yep. He's having a big night. Yeah, Hutchison's played well all around. Offense, defense, he kicks all the extra points. Yeah, you can see the replay came, comes from that side, wide open. Nothing Crooner could do. No, not at all. little surprise Fisher didn't just go ahead and burn a timeout on yeah, that one. Yeah, I mean. Um, you could tell the confusion coming on the field. Hutchison will be attempting the extra point. Confusion again as players are running off late. Extra point from Hutchison. Up and good. And Hutchison good. perfect on the night uh, for extra points. It makes it 42 to 10 with 10.20 left to play in the third quarter. And let's talk about replays. Our people are so good and you've seen quite a few already, but tonight's replays are brought to you by Dagger Law. Dagger Law would like to wish all of the area teams best of luck this season. Dagger Law is a law firm built on more than 110 years of legal experience. Whatever your situation, the knowledgeable legal professionals at Dagger Law can get you the help you need from a local, trusted, and experienced firm. Contact Dagger Law today at 740-759-4096 or online at daggerlaw.com. So speaking of replays, uh, you know they, they brought replays into baseball recently. Baseball's making some changes, uh, some rule changes coming next year. And, and one of the, the silliest things, I think, is making the base larger. Well. What is that all about? I, I, I think they, they, they believe that they'll make less closes, less plays closer at first base, which I think is absurd. It because is. Because the base is going to be three inches each direction. Right. There's going to be some plays closer at second than you can imagine. Is it is it closer so that's an easier call or closer so there's no collisions? I don't get it. Well, I think a combination, but, but you know, it's worked for over 100 years, <laughs> exactly. Jerry. That's my thing. Yeah. Why do you change something yeah. that's that's worked? But, um, Kickoff taken by Bennett. Bennett across the 20 and finally shoved out of bounds right about the 26-yard line. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't done a lot of reading about that. The, the one that I don't like is taking away the shift. In my opinion, yeah. every sport, look at football. You put your players defensively where you need them to try and have you right. the best chance of stopping the other yeah, team. Yeah, that's always frustrating me anyway. They, they put the shift out there. If you're a good, if you're a major league baseball player, bunt it to the opposite side, hit it to the opposite side. Yeah, that's what you're supposed <laughs> to be. You're, you're the, you're but there's so many guys that refuse to do that. Well, that that's it. I don't think that they can't. They, they refuse. refuse. Yep. So I have a pet peeve with that. Basketball, believe me, we did everything <laughs> we could do defensively not to let you beat us. Yeah. And Keeper I moved people with a lot of pressure. There just had to yep. throw it. Man, he just had no time whatsoever. Well, there's, you know, they've made a small adjustment. What we've seen here in the first two drives, Fairfield yeah. Christian right now is sending more people after him. They're not yeah. going to give him time to pick. Yeah, and, and it's – oh, I'm sorry, Stu. Go ahead. I'm sorry to talk over you. I, I just it's, – it's kind of a, a battle of wills here because Fisher tends to have so many people on the route, sometimes, you know, even yeah. four and five receivers, and it's just a matter of are they going to find a way to keep – additional blockers in to give him more time because yeah you've got receivers running wide open down the field but they don't have time to get it to him second and ten and whistle on a flag before the play starts and it's going to be Offside. encroachment offsides on Fairfield Christian hmm. encroachment gets to the Irish So first and five for Fisher Catholic. Or second and five, rather. Kiefer with right. Jack Wright to his left side. Yeah, they've sent six. Pass is caught by Bobby Bennett. Pass is complete to Bennett. Whoa, whoa, what? There's one official saying incomplete, and then 
Did you see that? The one official was waving it off, but they're going to give it to him. Yeah, the, the umpire and the side judge on this side had, had a, as a right, catch. Right, right. Yeah. So first and ten. It's Here's a good you, catch here you by see your Dagger Law replay right here. Another good catch yeah, again. Yeah, it was behind him, and he did yeah. a nice job. Hudson Harper on the defense also did a nice job. He almost wrestled it away. Hey, Jared, you weren't kidding about Bennett's athletic ability. Yeah. Man, he's had a ton of those catches tonight. And he's just a freshman. Here's Kiefer on the run. Got a lot of room. Kiefer across the 40. Oh. And brought down at the 39-yard line. It wasn't a flag thrown, but I thought I thought there might have been. <laughs> That's another way to beat pressure. Just have your quarterback outrun everybody to the, to the corner. Yeah, look at him go. Yeah. Right here. Hmm. Yeah. First and 10 for Fisher Catholic inside yep. FCA territory at the 39. A big game. Knights lead at 42 to 10 with 630 and counting here in the third quarter. Here's Jack Wright. Going to be swarmed, gang tackled at the 36-yard line. Got a lot of respect for Jack Wright playing hurt out here. Oh, absolutely. You can tell he is he is really in pain, and unfortunately, we're being robbed of. Uh, you know, see, I was excited to see him tonight. He runs so hard, uh, and, and just an, an an amazing running back. But uh, clearly, not 100 percent tonight. Second down and eight for the Irish. Kiefer again with no time, just going to tuck it in. Now he's going to hit or try to hit uh, Bobby Bennett, but it's just a bit low. Good job keeping his head up and looking downfield. Yeah. Under under duress there. He's done a really good job tonight scrambling. Uh, you know, he's, he's had a lot of pressure and <laughs> has had to throw a lot of passes on the run. Well, they're really coming after him this half. Not going to let him pick and choose and find his receiver. Right. You can see, Jared, look how many men are on the line for – FCA right now. Six, and here they all come. Yep. And he is, Kiefer is brought down in the backfield. Is that number six? Parker Couch, I believe. Yeah. On the tackle. Makes it fourth down and 12 for Fisher Catholic. Fourth and 12 for the Irish. So the Irish will go for it. Why not? <laughs> well, yeah, at this point in time. And well. an offensive lineman moved early. So that'll back him up even more, make it fourth and 17. Continues to tick down inside of four minutes to play in the third quarter. Bennett split out wide to the right side. Three receivers out to the left. Kiefer lofts one out there, but there was nobody over there. And he was thrown with two people in his yeah. face. Looked like his arm might have even gotten hit as he was throwing. Yeah, one of those in his face, number 66, John Garblins. I, I, again, we don't have sizes on the roster tonight, guys, but he looks like he goes at least 6'4", oh, yeah, he's big. At least. He's yeah. a big boy. So the Knights take back over. First and 10 at their own 46-yard line, leading 42 to 10. This is a, a series between these two teams. Fisher Catholic holds a slight edge, 6-5. to five, uh, But FCA has not won this game since 2016. That was their last victory. Uh, so Fisher Catholic has a four-game winning streak in the matchup. In that span, they've outscored FCA 165-26. to 26. They won last year 39-6. to six. So, of course, Fairfield Christian looking to avenge that. 
But uh, I'll tell you, prior, it, it's kind of weird. Uh, Fish, Fairfield Christian, you know, early in this series, won a string in a row. Right. And then Fisher Catholic over the last four or five years have won a string in a row. So it's been, you know, it's been kind of back and forth. And we'll see what happens here from here on out. These two teams, uh, I think, uh, over the next couple of years, uh, definitely going to be on the uprise with some young players coming in. And as those players get older, that, that can only mean good things. Yeah, it, this is a good thing. This ball was loose for uh, the Knights. Irish are saying they have it. Officials don't agree, so it's third down and eight. Third and eight for the Knights. You can see here on the replay, it, anytime you see stoppage and then a lot of people moving, yeah. <laughs> usually a sign that yeah. there's a loose ball. We saw that orange bean bag come out, so I thought it was something. Todd Blair goes in motion. This is Braden Stem on the carry right up the middle. He's a freshman. Stem with a nice hard run out across the 35 down to about the 30 yard line. Stem the ball carrier. O'Reilly on the tackle. First and 10 for the Knights. Clock continues to roll. We're down inside of two minutes to play in the third Roll quarter. 30. Welsh with Stem to his right. Check that. It's not Welsh anymore. It's Parker Couch lining up a quarterback. And Hyde O'Reilly takes it away. And he's going to race to the end zone for a touchdown, barring no flags behind him. And there are none. It's a touchdown Irish. You know, we've seen an interception return. We've seen a block punt touchdown and <laughs> a fumble re yeah. return. That's kind of rare in one game. <laughs> Looked like it might have been number 52, Gage Armstrong, to lock, knock that one loose, guys, as he went by him to make the tackle, just grabbed the ball and tackled it and ripped it right out. I think also 11 in there, Simon Martin, but Hyde O'Reilly, Johnny on the spot, picks it up and races to the end zone for the touchdown. And with the extra point coming from J.J. Vio, it could make it 42-17 if he makes this one with 107 to play in the third quarter. Hyde's had a big game tonight also. Yeah, he has. And FCA was off sides. You know, Coach Coach Timmis called him a weapon on both sides of the ball, and he mm -hmm. is. Yeah. He finds the ball. Like I said earlier, he's had some tremendous catches on, uh, you know, balls that were low, high, some some right <laughs> to him. that he, Then he just makes, makes stuff happen with his legs. Yeah, and the one he caught down there by the pylon yeah. across the way was a heck of a catch. Yeah, and a, uh, from a good throw as from, well. From yeah. a, a tremendous on his, throw. On the run. Yeah. So. But credit uh, Coach Pardon, uh, you know, getting some young guys in there, getting some playing time here early in the second half, and that extra point is blocked. Just... Man, they got in there. A whole bunch of guys got in there and blocked that. You know, when I was a young coach, Jared, I was told by a veteran coach uh, as I was getting into it, he always told me, if you want to develop depth, you got to play them. Yep, that's true. He's right. And he said you can't play them at the end of the game when it's lopsided one way or the other either. Right. Time. you got to stick them in there. He said it might only be a minute or two, but you got to stick them in. That's yeah. how you get depth. Fairfield Christian leads it, 42-16, with a minute seven to play in the third quarter. And let's say tonight's second half scoreboard sponsor is Buckeye Lake Marina. If you're looking for a new boat, a great pre-owned watercraft, or a place to get parts for your boat, Buckeye Lake Marina has it all. More information can be found at BuckeyeLakeMarina.com. What's going on? Are we going to line up and kick the extra point again? Um, it appears, doesn't it? Marion, do you know what's going on down there? I saw Coach Timmis come out and talk to the official, and I obviously couldn't hear what was said. But next thing I know, here the <laughs> extra point team for Fisher Catholic is going back out there. So I'm not sure what happened. Coach Pardon coming out now to out 
at least to the numbers on the side to try to get an explanation. No idea what's going on here. Is this another do-over? We've already had one of those tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Two in one night. <laughs> We're asking a lot, aren't we? It's a mulligan, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I take a lot of those. <laughs> Yep, I guess it is. They moved them closer, didn't they? Yeah, That's they it. did. But they didn't make a call. It's, I'm confused yeah. why there was no call made. And almost blocked again. But this time it goes through, and, and it makes okay. it 42 to 17 with 107 to play in the third quarter. Here's a look at JJVO, the kicker, along with Grant Kiefer, quarterback and holder for the Irish. If you brought a 50-50 ticket this evening, we will be announcing the winning number at the end of the third quarter. We have $246. So you hear them not we announcing the 50-50. Uh, we buy 15 draw. tickets every game. You remember <laughs> last year when we did the game? <laughs> I know. My ticket was called. I know. So I my know. wife swears to me it's going to get called tonight. It's going to get called tonight. <laughs> Well, that could happen. We'll know in about a minute seven here. <laughs> and you also sold a ticket to my wife. That's right. Year. That's right. And she and won some money. She right? hit the lottery. Yeah. That's right. If I buy anything like that, it never, <laughs> never comes out. I don't even. I'm like, yeah, you know, if I want to donate one thing, but I don't ever expect yeah, to win. Yeah. Kind of like your uh, little fun football pool we do that I <laughs> never, ever. How many times can, I, can a guy finish second? <laughs> second though the payoff is the same for second as it is for last <laughs> yeah you're right you get nothing second's just the first loser <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly right gives you hope though <laughs> keeps you playing right right uh. so the Irish will kick it off and squibber Goes through the hands of a knight and then picked up right about the 25-yard line by Ben Hopple. Hopple He'll take it up to about the 35. So first and 10 for Fairfield Christian. Back in, lining up a quarterback for Fairfield Christian. It's Parker Couch. He's a freshman. Some young bodies in there for Fairfield Christian now. There's a handoff to Blair. And Blair out to about the 40-yard yard line. Blair carries the ball for the night. Ben Burry's on the tackle for the Irish. He runs with purpose, that's for yes, sure. Yes, he does. Second and seven for the Clock rolls down near 30 seconds to play in the third. Couch since Todd Blair in motion. Hands off to Braden Stem. And Stem going to be wrapped up. Ella Clum was right there to meet him just as he took the handoff. Good job by Ella. Third, and ten for the night. third down and 10 coming up. As time runs out here on the third quarter. 42 to 17 is your score as we move into the final 12 minutes of play here from Fulton Field. Checking some scores again from other games. Still 21-7, Central Crossing over Lancaster in the fourth quarter. Circleville leads Amanda Clear Creek 43-12 in the third quarter. It's Bloom Carroll over Liberty Union 42-14 in the fourth quarter. Logan Elm has extended their lead on Fairfield Union 28-7. And right now that's uh, all the scores that we have. What's amazing is we're, you know, we're 
after tonight, 60% of the regular football season is over. And Crazy, isn't it? I know. It's the first game in the fall, considering five. we had five games in the summer season. And now here we are, week six, yeah. and it, it just goes fast, here. It does. We do have, uh, we'll say after this play, we'll take a look at Fisher Catholic's remaining schedule. Earlier tonight, we looked at Fairfield Christian's remaining schedule in all reality they could they could finish five and five after starting one and four they could parker couch nope gonna be wrapped up in the backfield leading the charge is that ben boyden 58 i believe yeah it was the lone senior actually i checked that there's two seniors on the field right now with ella Klum and ben boyden yeah, next week the Irish go to Zanesville to play Bishop Brosecrans and then travel down to Corning to play Miller. And then we have Martin's Ferry from clear over on the <laughs> river in eastern Ohio coming in. And then, of course, the final game with Sugar Grove, Burn Union, yeah. and um, always a, a fun game. And with the way Burns had a really nice season again. Yeah. be interesting. I'll tell you, that Martin's Ferry game, is uh, when Coach Temis first told me that that game was on the schedule, I said, say what now? <laughs> well, playing Martin's Ferry. You know, Martin's Ferry was a powerhouse yeah, for years yeah, in Ohio high school football. They, they, and they are tough, hard-nosed players. But he told me that uh, they, have a, they have a new coach over there, and they've, their numbers have been down, very young, very similar to a lot of the teams that we're seeing. You know, Lancaster's young, yeah. Fisher Catholic's young. Uh, and he just felt, you know, because Coach Timmis told him, he said, hey, listen, we're not your caliber team. And, he, and the coach assured him. He said, hey, we're, we're young. I, I don't think it'll be what you think it is. So he, <laughs> they're okay. going to bring him in and see yeah. what they can do. So, But, yeah, Martin's Ferry, beautiful facilities over yeah. there on the river. The, uh, the Purple Raiders, aren't they? They're purple. I'm, I don't know if they're the Raiders or not. Um, or the Riders. Purple Riders. The Riders, right. yeah. The Riders yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had a, a couple college teammates. One, actually, my roommate Chad Brinker, one of the one of the greatest oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, running backs in Ohio University history. He's from Martin's Ferry. No only, kidding. Only behind Marion Royster. Oh, come on! <laughs> 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 I did a lot of blocking for Chad, but uh, <laughs> so he owes me a lot. Some That's of those right. touchdowns he scored, I, 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 I blocked his way in there. <laughs> uh. That's one of those stadiums uh, very similar to Ironton. They've got on the home side the, yeah. the overhangs. You, you're out of the elements. It's the old-time stadium yeah. down on the, like I said, down the Ohio River down there. And um, they have a lot of pride. Yeah. Um, if you take two steps off your porch, though, you might be in the river because <laughs> some of the homes are actually built on a bank right down wow. to almost the river's edge. Wow. Yeah. First and ten for the Irish. 11.09 to play in the ball game. 42-17 is the score. Here's Grant Kiefer rolling out. Going to tuck it and run. Kiefer across the 25, and that's where he's going to be brought down. A really nice run by Kiefer yep. to get the first down. Showed some escapability right there. And, again, you just have to kind of He's all the way back absorb. at the four. Yeah, you got to absorb it. You know, this is a sophomore. Yeah. This is – He's still got a lot of areas to improve, right. but he's going to grow physically. He's already grown a lot mentally, is from what I hear from you guys. Mm -hmm. that I've had the chance to see him more often. Um, really looks like he's commanding the offense to me. Again, on the run. I mean, th there's just no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that was almost a pick six right there, intended for Bobby Bennett. Yeah, that was. Bennett um, for Bennett. Yeah, just every white shirt on that defensive line was in was in the backfield right away. Yeah, but that was that was Blair. He was uh, Danny Blair. He was he was waiting in the wings over yeah. there for that one. I think Blair has gotten hip. You know, he, he understands <laughs> now that as as they're pressuring uh, Kiefer to the corners there, yep. he understands. You know that he's got to either run with the football or get out out real quick, and was right there in position to make that play. Just didn't make the catch. Mm -hmm. Here's Jack Wright, right across the thirty. Jumps over top of somebody out across the 35 and tiptoes out of bounds. Are they going to give him the first down? I, I think, think so. so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we talked about Martin's Ferry being over on the river. How about uh, down south and on the river? We Fisher Catholic this year has already made trips to Franklin Furnace Green, and the very next week to Portsmouth to play Portsmouth Notre Dame. Those were some nice long trips. 
Yeah, it seems like a lot of the teams in Central Ohio are, are work, working that way because yeah. they have similar size schools. Right, right. Here's Wright again. And he's going to be wrapped up right at the line yeah, of scrimmage. Leading the way on the tackle is Carson Holbrook, a freshman. You know, it's interesting to see and I, what's going to happen with the Mid-State League, especially the other division. The Ohio is Holbrook. breaking up. Right. And then, of course, Taze Valley is joining the OCC in two years yep. along with Logan. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Mid-State League does. Yeah, it is. I especially if, you know, with the Ohio breaking up, if they move Harvest Prep to the Cardinal. Yeah. That's uh, it's not good. That, I mean, that, that, they're really a good football team and basketball team. Hi to Riley. Wow, what a circus <laughs> catch that was. Wow. And again, good defense put yeah. on by Hutchinson. Yeah. O'Reilly just went up high and hauled it in. You know, that's just tip a, drill, tipped yeah. it to himself. Just a tremendous catch. You see the replay coming up here. Yeah, I mean, both those guys. I mean, Hutchinson was playing good defense. O'Reilly just got a little bit higher than him. Well, I tell you, I'm talking to, again, to Coach Parton this week. He brought up Hyde O'Reilly and Kiefer. He said, listen, these are skilled guys. Right. They're good. Here's Bobby Bennett across the middle, across the 20, and there's a flag down. Is that one going to come back? I think they – no, it's going to be on FCA. <laughs> Todd Blair on the tackle. It's going to be a defensive holding on Fairfield Christian. They're going to take the result of the play or take the penalty. Tomorrow, and you got a score for the uh, Buckeye game tomorrow against the Badgers? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I'm going to say. 31 to 21 Buckeyes. Wow, you're only giving them 31, huh? <laughs> that's hey, the lowest I've Wisconsin's heard. Wisconsin's so not easy, though. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm giving Wisconsin some respect here. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't think they're they're quite as strong as they've been in years past, but uh, but I think uh, I think they'll keep them under 40. We'll, yeah. well and that. the way they play, to, you know, they're going to the run down. the ball. Yeah, right. the tempo. Bobcats hosting Fordham thing. tomorrow at Peden Stadium. The strange 2 o'clock start time. It's not one you normally hear. No, but you, you do whatever. I mean, <laughs> you get somebody to come in and play that you're going to beat. Right. <laughs> you know, they've had to go to Iowa State and uh, – Penn State. Penn State. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. That paid for all the sports <laughs> sports programs in, uh, in Athens for yeah. uh, the whole year. Yeah, uh, we actually played at Iowa State my senior year. Really? One of the hottest games I've ever seen, <laughs> guys. No, and, we're, we're, uh, and honest, one of our wide receivers had a heat stroke. Oh, wow. And, oh. Uh, and then they had to send him to the hospital. Luckily, he was okay, but but it was a scorcher. Huh. Ames, Iowa. A little, little pitch out on that play to Jack Wright. He takes it up across the original line of scrimmage to about the 15. My brother had spent time as a student at, the, at Iowa State, man. I just remember corn, <laughs> seeing a lot of it. Now, that's interesting right there. Yeah. Underhanded, forward. Yeah, I know. I remember Seneca Wallace. He was not fun <laughs> to take on that day when I was there. <laughs> Third down and nine. Kiefer lofts one to the end zone, and O'Reilly did a good job playing defense there, and there's a flag. You're going to call pass interference, I think. Are they going to get offensive pass interference? No. Or hold? No. Oh, hold on FCA. Wow. You know what? He's just kind of laying up there and letting uh, yeah. Riley make his, his play. Let his athlete make a play. Yeah. Absolutely. Watch here. They, they called the hold. Hyde did a good job of just yeah, becoming did. a defender and knocking it away. Watch this. Well, he did that earlier in the game, if you recall. I think the flag. Maybe it was before that. Yeah, it was right before. I think he had his arm pinned. Okay. I think his left arm was pinned. He had him pinned against his body. So that makes this uh, third down and two. Yep, there Keeper. it is again. Out to wow, that went nowhere. Nice job defensively by the Knights. Yes. Braden Stem along with 
number 11. That's Jimmy Schmidt. 10 to 11. Yep. So fourth down and two. No gain on the play. Schmidt and Stem on the tackle. Brings up a fourth down for the Irish. Those two should go into business Stem. together. Law for, uh, Schmitz and Stem. <laughs> Fourth and two. Got him split out to both sides with Jack Wright to his right. Kiefer going to keep it himself. Oh, he nope. didn't get it. No. He needed to get to the five, and now we've got a yep. flag late. Slamming him to the ground, I think. Yeah, that's on FCA. Yeah. We'll see it here. That's a tough call, guys. I agree. It, it's football, you know, and I know I'm old-fashioned. I know you want to keep guys safe, but, mm. Yeah, that's – that. I agree with you guys. That's nothing more than a tackle, I don't right. think. Right, yeah. I mean, you got to get them on the ground. It's aggressive know? tackle. Yeah. Wow. Do you remember way back in the day there was a guy in the NFL named Ben Dreit? And the Jets had a defensive end named Mark Gastineau. Uh-huh, I remember him. And he took a guy like that, except he kind of flipped him in the air over. And, and uh, when he called the penalty, the guys were screaming, what for? And he announced it. He's giving him the business. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> so what's yeah. going on here? I think they've overturned that again. Is what? that right? Yeah. I mean, the official uh, even yeah, made the call, right. yeah. like made the signal. And he's the white hat. No, they marked it off. They marked it off. No, they didn't. They're giving yeah. the ball to FCA, aren't they? No. Because Fisher changed. Yeah, they're on defense they're, now. Yeah, Fisher's defense is They waved field. it off. Wow. This is the, yeah, A third do-over. Really strange. Never seen that before. That's really strange. I mean, I, I think ultimately they got it right because I don't think that was a penalty. But once you've made the, the call. I can fortunately say there weren't a lot that I felt like I wanted to do in my career as an <laughs> official, but, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. Big hole there for Danny Blair. And Danny Blair is off to the races, and I don't think he's going to be caught. And 96. there are no flags on the field. Danny Blair, 96 yards for the touchdown. Wow. And, you know, he's had another one this year, about 95 like that as no well. No kidding. Yeah, against uh, Reedsville Eastern, I believe, up at Millersport. He had a 95-yarder last week as well, guys. So wow. The big playability for sure. You can see here, once he got the hole from the offensive line? He's got speed. Yes, he does. So Hutchinson on again to kick the extra point. It'll be out of the hold of Jimmy Schmitz. It is up and it is good. So with 6.55 to play in the ball game, Fisher Catholic now trails Fairfield Christian 49 to 17 after the Danny Blair 96 yard <laughs> touchdown run. Don't see a lot of those. No, and there, and there was nothing fancy about it. Uh, no, no. Although I will tell you, Shu, last night, uh, you know, I'm, I'm now doing uh, athletic director duties over at General Sherman Junior High School, and uh, we had a junior high game last night. Uh, it was a very good game between uh, Lancaster's eighth grade team and Groveport. Groveport's got a very skilled quarterback. Ve I mean, this kid's good. They faced a first and 40 from their <laughs> own five-yard line. <laughs> Ran a basic quarterback keeper around the right tackle. He takes it 95 yards for a touchdown. Wow. <laughs> and and Groveport won the game 8-6. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was it was huh. it was something else. First and 40. <laughs> First and 40. They just kept getting penalties, back them up, back them up, back them up. My oh my. Yeah. Groveport's uh eighth grade team is undefeated this year. No kidding. Yeah. Good for them. Yeah. You know, that's the game next week that we'll see here at Lancaster. Yep. Cruisers come to town. Speaking of Lancaster, with uh, Central Crossing tonight, that uh, they are trailing twenty-eight to seven at Central Crossing. It just—it's just been you know we we saw them earlier. It's just difficulty scoring, Jared. Yeah. And there's you know there's not a lot sometimes you can do to correct it. Right. Kick takes a weird bounce. 
Hyde O'Reilly has to go back and field it and gets up across the 25 yard line. Nice job by Hyde to just get some positive yardage there. Yeah, good return under those circumstances. So FCA will uh, move to two and four on the season, and uh, that'll give them the best record in Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I tell you what, they they have a good team. They do. They really do. And, and I really do think they'll they'll finish five and five. They had a tough start. Like I said, two of their losses are by a combined two points. And they might finish six and four. True. I mean, I know you've seen more than Christian. Yeah. But I tell you, they they can score. They can. After this play, we'll get to our players of the game. We'll start with uh, our Fisher Catholic player of the game, and then do the Fairfield Christian player of the game. As we have a new quarterback into the ball game for. The Irish, it's Jacob Welsh. And a whistle and a timeout by the Knights. So it gives us time to go with our players of the game. Tonight's uh, Fisher Catholic player of the game brought to you by Bay Food Market. Bay Food Market has been serving Fairfield County for more than 90 years. Located at the corner of Maple and Walnut Streets in Lancaster, Bay Food Market provides the community with the highest quality meats. Stop in and discover the Bay Food Market difference. Well, Shoe. Our Fisher Catholic uh, player of the game tonight. I think uh, there are two guys who really have had uh, outstanding games. But uh, what do you think? Well, I, I think as far as overall game, I think I think two guys have been really stood out or have st have stood out themselves, and that's Hyde O'Reilly and Grant Keeper. But yeah. I think Hyde O'Reilly is the player of the game. He, I agree. He is just really impactful. Yeah. And he's had a super game in a lot of ways. So congratulations to number four, Hyde O'Reilly for Fisher Catholic. He is our Fisher Catholic Bay Food Market player of the game. Let's get to our Edwards Insurance Agency Fish, uh, Fairfield Christian player of the game. Edwards Insurance Agency specializing in providing personalized insurance coverage that meets the needs of our individual clients. Contact Todd or Dale Edwards today. I think, uh, yeah, I think this one's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, it, 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 don't they, get me wrong. There have no. been several guys have good games for Fairfield Christian. Right. They have a good team, yeah. and, and they do a lot of things. But I, I, I think sophomore Danny Blair just yep. sets the tone in how hard he yep. plays and how hard he runs. So how about that? Our two players of the game tonight, both sophomores on both sides that's, of the field. That's impressive. Yeah, yep. You know, we don't really necessarily look at all that or evaluate that. We just kind of go with what we think and, you know. I'm sure Marion, he always likes to put his in there. I'd like to have his thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely, guys. And, and you know, it's it says so much for these programs going forward. Again, not a lot, you know, this season to uh, get excited about, particularly Fisher. Ooh. <laughs> and Schmitz. another FCA score. Schmitz, the Schmitz picks it off. Jimmy Schmitz, he's had a good game as well. He has. You've called <laughs> his name a lot. Yeah. Especially defensively, been very solid. Yep. Yeah. You know, and you, you know, you see the replay here. You don't tell the kids to quit playing, Jared. Right. Just because they're subs, they still got to play. Great job by Schmitz. He just ran right in he front did. of Jack Wright. He read that one all the way. Yep. Just, just <coughs> cut his face and get yourself six points. Yep. Now, so. I really I want to thank both coaches for taking time out of their busy schedules this week, Luke and um, Coach Pardon at FCA. Uh, both took time. It was great to talk to them. I love both of them have a lot of enthusiasm, Jared. The extra point was blocked. And the attempt is no good. You know, in spite of the records and the things that have gone on, <coughs> they both are upbeat. They've realized yeah. they have some youthful groups. Uh, FCA's got a few more seniors, but he's gone through some things with the injury to his son's eye. Yep. And they've hung in there. Now they're looking pretty doggone good right now into week six and then, you know, two in a row going into week seven. And you know what was impressive to me too, as well, Shu, about that is, you know, you contacted both those coaches on Monday and I, they called you back on Monday. I've never had what we call the game sheet done right, right. by Monday, but both coaches very, very classy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Coach Timmis, he, he knows what he's got. He, he is excited about still coaching them, yep. that they get better. Um, just continue. He said they're very coachable. They have great attitudes. And, you know, if you have those two things, 
and then you get fundamentally sound, you get older and stronger, you're going to be pretty good down the right. road. So 55-17 is the score here. FCA all over Fisher Catholic. 4.54 to play. It'll be the Knights to kick it off. Hutchison was perfect on the night uh, on the extra points until that last one, which was blocked. So uh, almost had the perfect night for him. Maybe the Browns can sign him up. <laughs> they don't need a kicker. Well, he, Cade York has missed uh, two extra points in the last two games. Well, he, he, what, are your, what are your thoughts he, on that? Moving it back, the extra point is, what, 30 yards now? Yeah, it's not quite as uh, simple. I mean, those guys are phenomenal. Right. And, and I mean, when you kick a 58-yarder like he did the first week yeah. or whatever, I mean, that's tremendous. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's such a thankless job. You're only really as good as your last kick. Yep. <laughs> you know, I mean, who's the guy that's the most consistent here recently? Um, I forget. It's made all of them in a row or – like Tucker. every who Justin, Justin Tucker, Tucker? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's unbelievable yep for the Ravens yep mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's I mean it's that's what separates those guys though they all have ability snap goes through yeah. the Good hands job. of Welsh and Bennett catches it but they Welsh say he was out of bounds and he just flagged him for late hit so that's gonna Move the ball forward, give the Irish a first down. I honestly didn't see it. We'll see the replay here. So the uh, snap goes through the hands of Welsh. He did a good job getting it up and getting rid of it. Yeah. Roping the passer. Oh, yeah. He picked him up and slammed him down after yeah. he already threw the ball. And look at look at what C Coach Pardon did. He got him off the field right away. He took him out of the game. Learning experience. Ball Absolutely. First and ten for the Irish. Welsh has right to his left. He's going to dump it out to him. It went right through the hands of Jack Wright. Incomplete. Clock rolls down inside of three minutes to play in the ball game. Stay tuned. Coming up at the uh, end of this contest, we will attempt to get a post-game interview. Marion will be out there uh, trying to get Coach Pardon. Coming up, uh, they have well, – I know we looked at their schedule uh, earlier tonight, but, you know, the rest of the way for them, they've got Worthington Christian next week. That That's really the toughest game left that they have. That's, that's After true. that, they've got Bishop Rosecrans, Miller, and Millersport. If they can uh, pull off an upset next week, you know, and really I'm not, I'm not sure how big of an upset it would even be. I mean, FCA is good. Well, yeah, they are. And you saw Worthington Christian. I haven't seen them. I have no idea, so – but I know they're generally well coached. They, they are well coached. I will say that they they shot themselves in the foot a lot. They had a really? lot of penalties, a lot of penalties. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna dis, you know, diss anybody else on the schedule. But what it appears to us like when we see the schedule, compared to us. But there is a reason why we play the games. Yeah. We do not phone them in. Right. And you've got to play. But about the moment you you relax, you can get beat. Or an injury. Right. At any level, once you have an injured player or something, boy, it can swing so fast. Yeah, if you look at that first game against Green, that was an overtime loss against what is now a 5-0 and team. Yeah. You know, they had the one-point loss to Eastern. Uh, so two losses by a total of three points. That's tough. You know, And then, of course, Burn Union – um, you know, Burn Union after their first loss against Colgrove, which is a really good football team, they've yeah. turned it on as well. Yeah, yeah, I think they changed up some things a little bit. You know, we, we're used to seeing Nate Nimeth air it out, and he's now he's more of a football. runner this year. Yeah, you know, he's he's kind of taking snaps and just going, and he's and he's running over 200 yards every game. It seems. Well, he's certainly talented. We know that. Yeah. Welsh to pass and another interception, and guess who it was again? <laughs> For the Knights, it was. Jimmy Schmitz, his second interception in as many uh, series, defensive series for them. Well, Ben Hoppel came in as the leader in interceptions, and I think Schmitz is trying to take that <laughs> leadership spot over. Yeah. So 
clock uh, right now stopped long enough to get the teams on the field, and then it'll continue to roll. 55-17 is a score here at Fulton Field. Here's a handoff to Stem, and he's going to be brought down at the 45-yard line. Stem, the ball carrier. DJ Rovers on the tackle. Do have a score now, a Millersport score. They trail Payton City 28-8 in the fourth quarter. Still nothing listed for Burn Union. Second nine for the Knights. There's a handoff to 22. That is Tommy Wolf, who's a senior, getting some playing time here. Hyde O'Reilly getting up slow for the Irish. Down under a minute to play in regulation. Top for the Irish. So the Knights will get in victory formation, and they will pick up their second win in a row. Last week they picked up the first one over Grove City Christian, and boy, they, they, there was no doubt about that one, 56-21. And once again tonight, no doubt about this one. They beat Fisher Catholic 55 to 17 on Fisher Catholic's homecoming night here at Fulton Field. So congratulations to Coach Pardon and the FCA Knights as they pick up their second in a row on their way to what we think uh, should be a pretty successful end of the season and uh, on into possibly playoffs. Yeah, you never know. If you keep getting better, I mean, they already hopped with one win up to 11th in yeah. that region, Jared, and that means if they can get a few more wins, they'll get a host of games. Because if true. you're in the top eight, yeah. you get a host. And then who knows? Yeah. Like I said, I we've seen it over the years before. People get hot yep. uh, at this time of year. And when you say hot, basically what's happened is they get more organized, more comfortable, and they improve. <laughs> yeah. So Marion is going to uh, attempt to get Coach Pardon and uh, get a word with him uh, on his team's victory tonight, 55-17 to 17 over Fisher Catholic. And uh, while we wait to – get that interview we want to say thank you to our interface video productions crew tonight josh messerly our producer director donnie zigfeld and shane messina down in the truck uh production truck as well on cameras tonight jason roush tom russo and jim spires we've got uh one of the best crews in the business and uh they bring it every friday night or saturday night whatever night it seems to be that we are uh doing football so we certainly want to thank them and uh fun getting back in the booth with you, Shu. I think I've got, what, two, two more that I get to do with you this year? Yeah, great great to have you. It's like old times. I mean, like riding a bicycle. You know, just hop on again and yep. off we go. So the teams will meet uh, in the middle of the field for their post-game prayer. And uh, we'll see if uh, after that if Marion is able to get uh, Coach Pardon. And I tell you what, uh, you know, we, we mentioned that Fisher Catholic has a lot of youth, but – so does FCA. Yeah, they have more seniors yes. uh, than Fisher Catholic does. But if you look at the bulk of the of the skill positions, you know, with Danny Blair and his younger brother Todd Blair, and then the quarterback Welsh is a junior. I mean, they, they've got some good quality skill guys that are going to be around for a while. Yeah, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. As, and as you said, you saw their, you know, middle school kids, yeah. and they, they look good. So, you know, both programs look like they're on the upswing here. You know, it doesn't always show in wins and losses right now. But I think down the road, you'll see that improvement. Coming up next week, we are back here at Fulton Field as the uh, Lancaster Golden Gales will uh, go for win number one as they host the Groveport Madison Cruisers. And uh, for Coach Schoonover, uh, he'll be playing his, uh, his old team, his uh, alma mater and the old team that he used to coach. Yep. So that's always uh, a fun game to do. And we'll uh, be back here at Fulton Field uh, next Friday night. Looks like they've, uh, they've said amen. And we will see if uh, we can get Coach Pardon as the teams uh, trot to their respective ends of the field. And it looks like Coach is making his way over to our Marion Royster. All right, guys. Yeah, here, here with head coach for, for uh, the Fairfield Christian Knights. 
uh, Coach Marcus Parton. Coach, great game tonight. Obviously, the offensive firepower was there uh, without uh, your son Z tonight, but uh, uh, Gabe stepped in as a quarterback, did a fantastic job, and of course, Danny Blair continues his incredible offensive output. Just talk a little bit about your offense tonight, what you guys were able to do. Uh, I, I thought that we were able to run the ball well, you know, control the offensive line um, in, in the trenches. Danny's been on a tear lately. He's running the ball really well. Um, we finally adjusted and overcame not having Zai. Um, and these guys are going to continue to play and get better. Uh, we were sloppy tonight. You know, it's a lot more penalties tonight than we've had all year. But it, right now, for us, it's about consistency. And I thought that we were a lot more consistent tonight than we've been this year. Defensively, it seemed like you guys, you know, really turned up the pressure in the second half. I don't know if that was by design because it may be Fisher Catholic, even though they didn't have a lot of points on the board. It seemed like they were in a rhythm, and when you started, you know, turning up the dialing up the pressure on the quarterback, tended to, uh, you know, change things for you in the second half. Yeah, I thought our defense. We went in and made some adjustments. There were some things that they were doing um, that was exploiting what we were trying to do. So in the second half, it, it was get refocused, dial up the pressure a little bit. And, and again, not get complacent, be consistent, because we've been in games where we've been up and, and we've let teams back in and we've let teams hang around and beat us. So um, that was just what we wanted to do was come out and be consistent and, and, and get the job done. I, I read somewhere coming into this game that you guys might be the best one and four team in the region. You know, had some tough breaks earlier in the season, uh, but you put two together. You looked very impressive doing that. Your last two wins. Uh, just talk a little bit about you know your outlook for the remainder of the season. You know, you guys could possibly win out. You know, and, and certainly have the opportunity to do that. You got a lot of talent. So, what's the rest of the season look like for you? Rest of the season for us looks like uh, what we preach: our culture, work, um, being willing to give two cent, having outstanding character receptive coaching and kingdom driven. That's what we're talking about. And our mentality is two cent, giving everything you have. So we want to do that for the rest of the season, be consistent at doing that. Uh, we've lost some tough games, absolutely. But it's right now we have a, we have, we're in a position to still go win a league title. We're in a position to still go, you know, and, and get a good uh, draw for the playoffs. And that's what we're focused on is, is doing those things. I don't know if we are the best one and four team or two and four team or whatever it is. We just want to be the best one and O team each week. You're building a great program, coach, and doing it the right way. Congratulations to you. Best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Yep. Back to you guys. Awesome job. Uh, great, great comments there by Coach Pardon, and uh, I think Marion said it best. He's he's building the program, doing doing it the right way. Yeah, I, like I said, I can't say enough about both these guys getting an opportunity to speak to them on um, the job they're doing and the and the. The teaching they're doing, Jared, yeah. more than coaching, along with it is teaching. And, uh, you know, you, you teach the game, but you're also teaching life skills. Yep. And um, if you do it the right way, and they are. Well, uh, like I said, it was fun getting back in the booth with you, Marion. Uh, good to see you again tonight. Nice, great, great job down on the sidelines. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it's, it goes without saying that uh, he's the best He's the best sideline reporter. I mean, you, you get it done down there, man. Oh, th thanks, Jared. I, it's, I feel the same about you, sir. It's so nice to have you back in the booth. And, you know, you and Chu, as you guys said, it's like riding a bike. You know, didn't miss a beat. That's very, very impressive. But a lot of fun tonight. Appreciate having you back. Again, not, not so much, you know, not, not a real close game, but uh, it was fun to do. Yeah. Once again, your final score tonight, uh, Fairfield Christian over Fisher Catholic, 55 to 17. We're back at Fulton Field next week for the Lancaster Golden Gales hosting the Groveport Madison Cruisers. For our entire Interface Video Productions crew and Marion Royster and Tim Shoemaker, I'm Jared Stewart. Have yourselves a great night, everybody. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, The Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, The Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina.
This has been an IVP Sports Production.